somebody in this room is struggling and they've they're they're they can't communicate it so if you're not struggling be a good listener be a good friend at check in on people and if you are struggling you're not alone because yeah. i am depressed as shit and if i can be depressed anybody can because i have a great life great life. i had a great childhood everything's perfect i'm very very happy person yeah but depression doesn't give a fuck If you pay like an extra like dollar fifty, they'll write something on your cut. That's like, it's only eighteen and older. I still oh, okay. Know. So I saw that extra sweetness or something like that or whatever yeah. it was. Like don't be a dick or I don't know. Got it. Okay, so that's what it is. So you can. That's why you have to be eighteen because they'll say something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know why you pay a dollar fifty though. I do that for free. If I was a yeah. Me too. Barista, you know? Like, you would make that your thing, yeah. right? Like, yeah, <laughs> like we'll insult you for free. Like, yeah. Well, that's yeah. like a, that's a, that's a thing now. Like, uh, you, there's like all kinds of restaurants where you can go and that's, they'll be a dick to you and that's, yeah. that's part of the fun. Right. Like, you yeah. gotta pay me to write, don't be a dick. <laughs> you can also, I, I, I chose this and it's free though. You could click like, whoever picks this drink up. We have to make them leave with a smile and over compliment them. And right. so I clicked that. So I hopefully the DoorDash got a little. Oh, that's. But see, that's super cool. Like hey, that that's interactiveness. Yeah. See, my fucked up brain like went to uh, if it's 18 and over, like they write something like dirty on your cup. Yeah. Well, same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they say extra, dick. extra love, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a big dick. Yeah. They just draw dicks on there. <laughs> you get boobs. Boobs, boobs on your cup. <laughs> boobs and dicks on coffee cups. On coffee cups, yeah. I wonder, that should be part of their um, interview process. Right. Is uh, they have you draw, you know, and if you can draw boobs and dicks good, then you're hired. You get a, yeah. That's probably part of it. Yeah. I'm sure there has to be something, some kind of qualification, though. Like, if can you make somebody smile? Yeah. On command. Mm-hmm. Um, without showing your boobs or your dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you can make people smile by doing that. Otherwise, you yeah. know, if people are frowning when you show them that, sure. it's, that's, that's, that's not good. Very true. <laughs> well, except the dick thing. Nobody actually really wants to see a dick. No, dude, they're, they're, fucking, weird. they're, they're fucking They're fucking They're weird looking. They're weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just you know, that's the thing, man. I've, I, like, I've, I've been... I've wondered about this whole dick pic thing for so long because, like, who the fuck wants to look at a penis? They're, I don't even like to look at mine. That's why I got fat. I got tired of seeing it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just, yeah, they're just weird looking. They just hang there. They're just yeah. not very aesthetically pleasing. No. Um, we, we started watching this show called Naked Attraction. Have you heard of yes, this? Yes, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I had seen that in the U.K., Back a long time ago, but it just for it must be pop, getting popular in this country for some reason on Netflix because we it's just on on everybody's front page right now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, see, like you have you watched it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like all the dicks are just like. Yeah. I feel like they're really looking at you, but they have like a little hood. They do. Yeah. Yeah. There's like the on the first episode, there's the one circumcised guy, and you're like, that guy's not going to make it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. This girl's like, what He's the hell is that? Yeah. 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 They've never seen that over there. <laughs> I have this joke that I do in the uh, UK, and since we're opening up with this conversation, I think this is a good place to go. Uh, so I'll be like, you know, you got how many people in here are, are uh, circumcised? And like nobody raises their hand, right? And I'm like, you know, you know that uh, the reason that we're all circumcised is because of the popularity of calamari in our country. <laughs> because that's what calamari is, is foreskin. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And because uh, that's exactly, you know what I'm saying? That's what it would be. Like just fry up that foreskin right there. And it's probably the same texture. That's my theory of yeah, anything yeah. fried and dipped in ranch, I'm down to eat. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's gonna I think good. they do can make, because that's the thing, right? Is like, I'm not the biggest zucchini fan in the world, but if you fry that shit, I'm, I'm in. Dude, you could fry a turd and sell it at the state fair. I'm you sure, probably I'm sure could. People would, people would buy it. You, you know? know that some farmers tried it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Let's just fry up this, these rabbit pellets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dip it in some marinara i uh, have to admit i put a rabbit pellet in my mouth one time uh when i was uh, i was about fifth grade and i had a pet rabbit 
I'm glad you didn't say last week. No, it wasn't last <laughs> week. Uh, but I, uh, the rabbit had the run of my room, and it had, I guess, been in my bed. And I found something in my bed that was round, and it's dark. And like you do, you just stick it in your mouth. And uh, yeah, I know. It's stupid. But uh, anyway, so I had rabbit poop in my mouth. No. Yeah, so what's, the, what's the what's like? the verdict? Yeah. Not yeah. good. No. I, uh, I Luckily, I did not bite down. Um <laughs> But uh, and I got it out of there as quick as possible. <laughs> the trajectory of the the they they go it went far. I heard it hit like the like on the opposite end of the room, and I I was like, okay, so it could be onto something there. But no, anyway. Well, it would be interesting if uh, if you spit it at the wall if you if it sticks. Or not. <laughs> yeah, you know? it just flattened, and it's just <laughs> you might you might need to uh, you know hold it in your mouth for a little longer oh, so it gets gross. a little wetter so yeah. it sticks to the wall. <laughs> I actually um, took up for a kid one time because they were called they, they called this kid doo doo eater in junior high, and I don't know why they were calling him that, but uh, dude, I was junior like, high kids are the fucking worst. Yeah, so I was like, hey, I'm a doo doo eater. If you're gonna pick on anybody, pick on me. I put rabbit shit in my mouth one time, oh. and like the kid was just like, I mean, they, so they stopped calling him doo doo eater. Very nice. Uh, yeah. That yeah. is big of you to do in yeah. junior high when everyone's a piece of shit in junior high. Yeah, but high. I was quicker than everybody, so nobody messed with me. I wasn't tough or anything, but you didn't, like, I, all through school, you didn't want to mess with me because I was faster than you, uh, mind-wise. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, quick wit r- really makes people scared of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why we, we we played that game together over uh, the pandemic. Yes, you know, and I was I was so nervous because I don't think I'm very quick, but I know like you busted it out. Somebody called diarrhea leg lava too, and that was the greatest thing. Well, ever my heard. wife's really good at that too. So, uh, but but no, that was fun. That, you know, that was one of the cool things about the pandemic was we had game nights with just cool. I mean, like you guys with uh, you know. Ryan Carrera and Alexa Bliss and like just eat just the most random game nights because it was like, hey, you know, this is our world now. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah, we hung out more during the pandemic than we do in real life. I know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. During feel- that time, I was like, I'm going to be so productive. I'm going to oh, paint. Yeah. I did one painting because someone paid me to and it was so hard for me to get done. It was a good one, and though. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought a print of that painting, I think. Yes. That's, That's the right. paint. Yeah. The one painting that yeah. I accept. I've done two now. Yeah. I've done two paintings in the past five years. <clears throat> I was so anxious over the whole, that whole thing about just what you're saying about being productive. And like, I, when I look back on it, I, I guess I was productive, but I didn't feel like I was being, I mean, I didn't get the garage cleaned out and I didn't lose weight and I didn't, you know, all these things that like, that everybody had built up in your mind, but I just saw this one thing and it just, it, all of the, it just, all of the pressure just went, and it was so simple. It just said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. All of these things that you have on your list, fine, whatever. But your main purpose is to survive. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And at that point I was like, pressure's off. Like, yeah. okay. So I wrote two albums and, uh, you know, I had a bunch of game nights. And uh, that's very productive, though, yeah, writing, you know? writing two albums. That's the thing, though, is that like I I didn't give myself that it, uh, I, because I would have done that anyway. So okay, but I yeah. didn't think to myself until after the fact when I come out of it with a new Bowling for Soup record and then a new country record that that is doing very well for me, both of them. Um, but, yeah, that was the thing is I, I, I it was the other stuff. You know, it was like, well, why am I not going for more walks? Why am I not, yeah. like I said, the garage thing? Or like doing the stuff that you're like, oh, I wish I had time to do this. And then you have time to and do it. And now you got yeah. the time to do it. But yeah. then you've got the time to do it and you're in the middle of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like, I think we were all in the same boat. Like, I think you just sort of woke up every day just going. It's just so fucking weird. It was weird. Like, it, like just put everybody in a weird headspace to where like, you know, if if a pandemic's not going on and you yeah. find yourself with extra time, if you're really motivated, you could be like, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then yeah. you can actually do it. But with the pandemic, it's just you're waking up every day and you're like freaked out or at least everybody was for a while. And yeah. it's just like, just, just put everybody in a weird mental state, you know? It was sort of this opposite thing of like how we have to make ourselves slow down yeah. in the real world. Like I have to make myself take a break. Like I, like... 
literally, I've cleared my schedule for the rest of this day, sort of, so that I'll just sit down. I'm going to watch a couple of football games, and you know, then I've, I've got to sing two things today, but, but that's it. So, but see, even on a day where I'm supposed to chill, I won't chill. Yeah. And then, but it was the opposite of that. It was just yeah. like, I, now I'm having trouble just making myself, you know, not watch Judge Judy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, especially I if mean, you're prone to anxiety and depression exactly. and stuff, I think we should applaud ourselves for not mm -hmm. just staying in bed all day. Because yeah. I feel like that would have been so easy mm -hmm. for like me, especially to like not just want to get up out of bed yeah. during that time. But I think just the fact that like yeah. we did anything. But you know what? And I did stay in bed a few days yeah. and that was okay. I didn't yeah. beat myself up over it. You know, I was like. Just like you said, you know, like I, I wasn't in bed for a week like I was, you know, when depression first found me, you know, it was. Um, mm. But, yeah, that was the big thing was is trying to navigate anxiety, depression and stuff during that time. Yeah. Um, because just all the normal outlets or whatever, you know, you had to really simplify, you know, drink water, get sun, you know, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's got sort of all you could do. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, it was, that was a, that was a weird, weird aspect of that whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, we did it. Well, yeah. the bonus is more judge Judy is always a good thing. You know, man, that lady is just the funniest damn lady. <laughs> I she's mean, incredible. She just makes me laugh. And, and what's funny is that she's funnier off the show. Did you guys ever watch the Norm Macdonald show? He only had like seven episodes on no. Netflix. <laughs> Do yourself, if you guys are just, if you're, if y'all are watching that naked game show, then you have time. <laughs> uh, because that I know is the end of it all. That, that, well, that's like, okay, well, we're, we're, we shouldn't start a new show because we've got a busy weekend coming ahead. So, what, well, there's this naked game show. <laughs> we'll do this. So, uh, the, the episode of the Norm MacDonald show with Judge Judy on it is so good because it's just her being herself and talking about her family and her kids and... And uh, you just get some real good insight into yeah. just who she is as a person. Pretty cool. Are there, is there any dicks or boobs in that show, though? There are no dicks and boobs. Probably talk of it a lot, I'm sure, because <laughs> David Spade's on there. One time, but, uh, yeah, it's nothing like this show. <laughs> with the dicks and the boobs dude I'll, I'll tell you what if you ever want to feel better about yourself you can just watch an episode of judge judy because some of the people on that oh show you're like yeah totally. yeah it's incredible well that's why i watch teen mom <laughs> because uh if you know they're not teens anymore the kids are like 10 and 11 right so these are just grown-ass people which just they're just all fucked up Wait, what's that? What's that? The teens or the parents or? Okay, You've so never seen Teen Mom. No. So Teen Mom started out as the sixteen and pregnant, which is just like mm -hmm. each yeah, of yeah, these yeah. girls had a show, one show, and they followed them around and whatever. So then that they took the best of those and they got a show called Teen Mom and they followed them around, you know, for years and years and years. Yeah. So that's still a thing, but they've had all these spinoffs and now they've brought them all back into one show. So there's like six left. Excuse me. And. Um, but they're grown now. So yeah. now they have like multiple kids and but man, if you just want to feel <laughs> feel like man, I am kicking ass in the world. You just watch that show. Because it you'll just you, you seriously you just watch and you're just like, you know, man, I mean, even my friends have got their shit together. Like this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh s sometimes I feel like that with uh the relationship shows that we watch yeah. as far as like being in a relationship. I'm like, you know what? Ultimatum Even on our worst fine. days, I'm, I'm not so bad at this. Right. You know? Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. You can, uh, I mean, that's just it. I, that's sort of the only television that, that I, cause I, I, I'm not a big TV watcher, but that is a, a way that Casey and I spend time together. So, I'll watch a show with her. So, you know, yeah. we watched Ted Lasso and we watch, mm -hmm. uh, we got into this, uh, black mirror. Uh, we're yeah. going back and watching all those. And it's usually one show at a time. But there's those trashy shows that I like. Like we watched a couple of seasons of uh, Love After Lockup. I've heard of that. I haven't. I haven't we haven't oh, watched man. it yet, but uh -huh. I've heard it's, yeah. it's. Well, go back and watch the old ones because it's Jump the Shark now. You can tell it's, because it's, that's what happens to reality TV, right? They get, they start to get a following. And then what happens is the magic stops. So they start trying to fake it and put the people in these situations and they start to manipulate the scenarios and immediately when they do that I can tell and it yeah. just takes all of it like it's not fun anymore yeah. you know mm -hmm. so um, and, and honestly 
there, that's sort of the way that goes. Do you guys watch Love is Blind? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is the worst season ever, right? Yeah. Well, we, we're like no spoilers. Okay. We're, we're a yeah. couple episodes in. You'll see. We haven't gone to gotten to the honeymoon part yet. Okay. All right. Well, it's I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but you but you can't help but avoid it. If you are online, everybody's like, this is the worst, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Did you hear that they cut out a whole couple from the show because the lady who got engaged and everything, she's suing the production company? No. So I was just, it's funny because I was just listening to it on the way here. But yeah, there's a whole couple that they cut out because she's uh, suing the company for neglect and for imprisonment. And um, saying like her fiance during the show was like touching her without permission and like all this. And then the the show was just like, oh, well, it's just miscommunication or something. But she felt like yeah. they were. Mm. Yeah, that's not good. But it's yeah, funny. Not it's not funny at all. Um, the part that was kind of humorous was when she, I was listening and they're like, yeah, you know, they made us like drink alcohol oh. to start conversations and be confrontational and i'm yeah. like that's not they made you <laughs> yeah well yeah okay because that's the thing right okay so that that is on that show you can just tell and they do this on teen mom too when they send them on these excursions like they're just feeding them alcohol with it now again they're not shoving it down their mouth but they're making it available to them or whatever and you really do get yeah, you get people to say some shit that they wouldn't ordinarily you say know, when they're drinking. I cannot mm -hmm. remember who it was, but we had somebody in here who was either knew somebody on on one of the seasons of Love Is Blind, but he was talking about how they're just plastered the entire time, and yeah. you could they uh, it was like a it was like a meme for a long time, like the first couple seasons, like they always had those gold cups, like yeah. no matter where they were yeah. in the pods at home, like they mm -hmm. always had those, and so they're always just they're just ham. You can tell it. Yeah. Oh yeah. But also, okay. I remember, okay, this just hit me. You guys are fans of uh, Married at First Sight because yeah. Homeboy yes. came in here and got tattooed, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and... Uh, my, my boy Gil. Gil. Shout out Yeah, Gil. the best, right? Like the best character <laughs> yeah. in the history of that show. Like I would have married that guy. Yes. Like, and I would have been so I nice. Still, I would Colton. still marry him, man. Yeah. I would have been so nice to that goddamn dog. You know, like yes. that the lady didn't want, but then she did. And oh my God. Anyway, that killed me, by the way, that she ended up with the it was Johnny her. or whatever the hell. Oh, I hated it. So much. I hated it. Oh, that dude sucks so bad. Anyway, that's another one of those shows, though, man. They for sure get them all liquored up because yeah. by the time they're doing their testimonials where they're doing excursion and stuff, like they're just shit faced. Like that last season, um, Gina and the redheaded guy or whatever, like I think they just made an agreement to be like, let's just stick with this no drama and let's just use it for what it is and let's just go out and have a great time and they did it yeah yeah we never finished the last season oh you did it no no, no no but oh. yeah she's the hairdresser and she ended up with this guy named clint and it, but at, but they he said at the honeymoon in front of everybody that she, that he usually dates slender yeah girls. okay yeah we watched we watched that part of it and um, you know, may maybe we're just shit people for this, but there wasn't too much juice going on in that season, yeah, which no. I think it just kind of made us like not watch. Yeah. Also, Married at First Sight is like, it's like a long grind, right? Like it that's is. a long show. They're long episodes. Yeah. It's eight weeks and they really like get it. Like, whereas Love is Blind, like you can watch it in a, in a day or two, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's really a commitment to sit down and watch a whole season of Married at First Sight. And they do all those like special episodes all the time. And you like, when you get a special episode, you're like, oh, damn it. Now I've got to wait another week. You know, like, yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah. I don't need a recap. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. just yeah. let me, let me move on to the other thing. Yeah. During those shows, Van Colton liked to play a fun game sometimes of who would you rather fuck? <laughs> we do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but ours is, the, our, here's ours, is who could you make it work with, right? Mm -hmm. And it's almost every single time, and my wife will attest to this, she, it's like five out of six of them, I could for sure make it work. Like, I could get through that show, that person would 100% love me, we'd make mm -hmm. it work. Mm -hmm. And usually she's about one of them. You know, where it's yeah. just like, yeah, I'm everybody not, else, you would that. murder yeah. all of these yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. But I'm like, no, I could, I could make that girl happy. Yeah. yeah. That's easy. Yeah. You know, at least for eight weeks, yeah, you know, or four totally. weeks, whatever We'd it is. Get through yeah. this thing or whatever. Yeah. And, no, but whenever we play that game, she always like has me pick between like one of the girls on the show who I hate. Yeah. And then one of the guys. Oh. 
I'm not gay even at all, but right. I always pick the guys because yeah. there are some girls that I'm like, no, dude, I, I would never, you know? I'm with you. <laughs> totally with you. Man. For me, Johnny was always, I would do anybody else but him. Yeah, that dude sucked. You could put yeah. Johnny up against anybody else. I'd pick that other person. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was super interesting, though. And, and it's always cool to talk to people who have done reality shows because they always yeah. have like a different spin on it. So, so I feel like when we talked to Gil, like he gave me a little bit more inside on just at everyone and everything that was going on. So I yeah. don't, I don't hate Johnny as much after talking to Gil. Uh, after all. There's a, there's, well, as you know, Deanna, I mean, so much of the person's story is up to the editor and, oh, absolutely, and the, the show yeah. runners and all of that. Like, yeah. you know, I, it's, uh, it can be, it can be painful to watch actually, you know, when you know somebody on one of those shows actually, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 And, 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 And it's hard because, like, I know the editors do a lot, but also I think it, whatever your personality, it's times 10 on TV. Yeah, for sure. They really pick your worst moments. Mm -hmm. So um, I will say one thing that Gil did say about that show specifically is he said that it was, it's pretty much all, uh, like, they don't really fabricate anything as far as, like, making drama up or anything like that. Like, he was talking about his season, and I don't know if you uh, remember, but there's, like, one scene where, uh, Brett, I forget the guy's name, but they, he, she confronts him about being on a dating app. Yeah. And he said that was like the only thing that he was like, um, you know, they, they, they said, Hey, you've, you've got to talk about this. But other than that, he said it was like pretty much all, really? all raw. So yeah. I, I respect that. Yeah. yeah. Have you done any reality TV? I got offered two. Um, but, uh, so I got offered, um, that show that Tommy Lee and Ludacris did. Uh, where they traveled around the world uh, with, and they they had celebrity teams, and it was basically uh, all like for environmental stuff or whatever. And I got offered that show, and but I was touring a lot, and my thing was, I did I was married to my ex at the time, and I just had this theory that you don't go on a re- on a reality show unless you want to get a divorce. Because it just it just seems like that's you know because they're looking for those moments of you just you know anything that you you know what I mean and so and of course this was back when my buddy's flicker stick had just been on that VH1 show and like man th- those guys partied and and fucked shit up on that show and came home and their lives were a mess you know because I mean there was like debauchery you know. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to not. I, I turned it down and uh, and and I'm glad I did because I don't think the show did all that great. Mm. Um, That's probably because you weren't on it. It is because I wasn't <laughs> on it. Yeah. They ended up getting like the bass player for train, you know, and uh, of course, I'm sure that guy's great. But um, <laughs> it was, I, mean, I don't know. I don't even know that guy. Like, yeah. I know the yeah. singer for train. But, yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I'm sure he was awesome. Uh, but we, oh, but you know what? To uh, exclamate me saying no, we did get to play the final uh, episode party for it at uh, in Hollywood. And we played our, I think we played Girl the Bad Guys Want. And then uh, we were D. Snyder's band and we did We're Not Gonna Take It uh, for Twisted, the Twisted Sister song with the singer for Twisted Sister. Oh, which, sweet. Wow. Metal Jarrett, you know, little chubby drummer, 1985 Jarrett was very happy. Yeah. But oh, I was, bet <laughs> yeah. that was happening. Uh, and then what was you said you got offered too? What was yeah? The other and one? then the other one was uh, a show called Love Is Blind. No, Love Is Blind. <laughs> I got offered that one. No, Bowling for Soup got offered a uh, European one. Oh, uh, Naked Attraction called Naked Attraction. <laughs> yeah, and only one of us really has an impressive wiener. So, uh, and it's not me. Um, well, I guess two of us now, but. Uh, yeah, me and Chris sit sidebar on the wiener showing. But, well, uh, remember, impressive is a relative term because nobody likes to look at wieners. That's true. Yeah. You know, yeah. and ours are adorable. I mean, they are cute. You know, they're not scary. You know, because not the thing is, is that like some of them look like water weenies. Remember those things you could, hey, I can't hold on to this thing. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, it's like a water balloon thing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And that, it's, yeah. some, I, it's just the, I, cause when they have the little, like when they're uncircumcised and they have like all the skin at the end, it's just mm-hmm. like, God, that seems excessive. <laughs> it just seems like there's a lot, you know? Yeah. Of oh, yeah. Skin. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, well. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, uh, I had a friend, uh, we had a, a guy that we worked with that, um, 
back in Denton when we were doing the our first few albums and uh he was in this group of people that are mad at their parents for circumcising them <laughs> and uh, you know in all this i haven't even asked you are you circumcised or I'm am i offending you? okay no good. no no yeah. okay okay good this is america yeah exactly <laughs> right. it's getting more and more common for you not to be but mm-hmm. you know your penises yeah. are just weird i can't help it you know whatever <laughs> but uh they were mad at their parents so they were trying to re get foreskin like so there's like this tape they would tape their wieners so that it would train the foreskin to like come back out you know and they would so they would have just tape on their wiener and so like we'd get in the studio i'd be like you got tape on your dick and they'd be like yeah i did did it it work I didn't stay around long enough to find out. <laughs> well, we got to find that guy. After, I would just think that you picture. would just give up. You know what I mean? Like, I used nasal strips for a while, and even yeah. getting those things off in the morning. Like, I, like I, don't, I don't need that. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a fun uh, experience. No, yeah. not on my wiener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Have we started the podcast? And welcome into the show. No. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I should do the, uh, the introduction. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we've already sent a record for the most we've talked about dicks on the show. Right. We've, we've had, this is our 13th episode okay. and we've had 12 episodes and we've talked more about dicks yeah. today than we have in the cumulative of the first 12 episodes. 13 is my lucky number, first of all. And I didn't just pick that because it's a cool tattoo number. Uh, it has always been my favorite number. How many Friday the 13th tattoos do you have? I do not have any, but I do have three 13s on me, I think. No, four. I don't know. You know, when you get to a point, and you guys know this, like, how, how many people ask you all the time, like, how many tattoos how do many you have? Tattoos oh, do you I have? Do. No, I, no, no. I, it's just all one now, you know? Um, like, I love that in your country album, one of the songs, it changes oh, from, like, that's what I just was going to talk about, yeah. <laughs> 15, yeah. It's literally on the way over here, I was thinking, you know, I, I can't even count how many tattoos I have, because yeah. they just kind of all run together at well, some point. Well, because at some point, you go in, and you... There's, there's a time in your, like, as you're getting a lot on your legs or your arms, and you go in and you don't even leave with a tattoo that day. You leave with, like, shading and color and stuff. It, you feel like you just got an oil change on your car. Like, you know that you needed to do it, yeah, but you're just like, like uh, ah, yeah. I mean, what? What just dude, happened? Dude, that's how I feel about uh, finishing tattoos. Like when I was working on my back piece, you yeah. know, I took two trips out. I got it done in Maryland. I took two yeah. trips out there. And after the second one, so after the first one, it was like half a skull. Like it was very clearly like, okay, this shit's not done. So I right. had to go back. And then I went back the second time and I did like the whole skull. And there was like some stuff around it that we still had to do. Yeah. And uh, dude, I just put it off for so long. It's like, I do not fucking want to finish yeah. this. It looks good. Yeah. As it, it does is, look you good. Know? It's like, yeah. Pictures, yeah. When, it, when you finish a tattoo, it's that already looks done. It's it's more for the artist. Yeah. You know, yeah. they know it's not finished, yeah. but you're like, dude, I hate getting tattooed. I hate <laughs> it looks good enough. Yeah. I hate doing That's why, like, when I tattoo, I'm like, how can I make this go from zero to 100? Yeah. Because I don't want someone leaving with, like, a half-finished tattoo. I, but I do I do think, like, the it is funny to me how many tattoo artists I know now uh, and how many that, that I'm, like, friends with, like you, that will just tell you, I fucking hate getting tattooed. It sucks. It's- I don't like it. Like, nobody really likes it. I hate getting tattooed. I, I now, now that I've gotten older when I get tattooed, I cry probably 90% of the time. Oh, no. With my hands, my even my upper arms I just got done, yeah. like this one. Yeah. I don't know. I cry now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I cry in the middle of my session. Oh. So my clients are like, "Oh man, I hope I'm sitting good for you." I'm like, "You're doing better than yeah. I would yeah. be right now." Like I'm impressed. Well, when we came here, we got our. Uh, by the way, we got our 25th Bowling for Soup 25th anniversary tattoos uh, here at Eden, and uh, and uh, Rob went last, and poor Rob still had. So Bowling for Soup, we have, I think seven or eight all of the same tattoos because we have several anniversaries but we then we have one that's just like all like even previous members so we have two previous members of the band that have it and so rob's eventually gonna have to get it because i fuck with them all the time and i'm like one day we're all gonna be in the same room and we're gonna take a picture of that and you're not gonna be able to be in it and you've been in the band since 2017 <laughs> and uh, but anyway he sat here and did the thing where like we, he had to stop and y'all had to get him like 
sugar and he had to oh, drink yeah. a coke yeah. and and uh and that thing and it wasn't even big it was just like yeah. this little tattoo oh, yeah. but he just <laughs> hates it he it, it just sucks. it gives him anxiety and he just yeah. he does not like it and i i don't have i don't like it by any means but i don't have any sort of like anxiety i i will say this we get offers for people to tattoo us all the time on tour and i i've i've learned to say no because Getting tattooed hungover is the oh, absolute dude. worst thing that you could ever imagine. Yeah. And that oh seems to be like how it works. Like yeah. the night before yeah, yeah. is a rager and they show up and they're like, hey, dude, the guy's set up to tattoo you. It, it's noon. And you're like, oh, and you're like, oh my God. Like I, I literally, I just barfed and brushed my teeth seven <laughs> times. And, and then you would have to go in there and sit because you let the guy come, you know, and uh, uh. I, I just say no now. Yeah, I, I could probably, when I was 18, 19, yeah. I could do that all day. Right. I could drink, period. Sure. And feel fine the next day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now right. it takes me two days to recover from, like, wine. I know. But, um, yeah, fuck no. Hangovers fuck no. are so interesting because they're this ever-evolving thing, you know, where, like, you know, when you're young, you get a headache or a stomach ache, and, or you, and you just have a beer and it just goes away. But now, a hangover for me is just... It, total exhaustion and it's a day and a half yeah yes. if, if oh I, yeah oh yeah you know like if, if it's a real good night i mean like i have on tour i have to we all do now um because gary had a bit of a health scare um last year on tour and oh, uh God. we um everything's fine okay. but we it was a big wake-up call for us like we we eat at least one healthy meal a day and we go to bed you know, like we, yeah. we don't stay up till five o'clock in the morning every day anymore. Yeah. You know, like we're, it's, you know, Hey, it's one o'clock. Let's hit the hay guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you just, it just, it, oh man, it gets bad, but it's been fun watching Casey cause, uh, she is, uh, my wife is 18 years younger than me because I'm famous. And, uh, <laughs> that's how, that's, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I'm kidding, but that's seriously, it's true. And, but, um, but, uh, you know, when, when we first got together, I was 40 and she was 22 and like, I was already in that thing where like we would go out and like the next day I'm just, oh my God, what are you doing? And she's up at eight 30 and she's like, but let's go, let's, we're, we're going to go do this. We're going to do this. I'm like, lay back down, stop <laughs> it, oh, it, just go get out of here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it, anyway, it's catching up to her. She's, uh. She's in her thirties now, and so uh, it, you know, she understands. Yeah. I just kind of put it together that maybe the level of fame depends on like the age gap between you and your significant other. Yeah. Like you're very famous, yeah. eighteen. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> This Le- much. Less <laughs> and you're and three and a, a half years younger. younger. Yeah, yeah. Moderately. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> maybe that is a th- it, like Michael Douglas, his wife's like 40 years younger than him or whatever. Like, what was who's the, who's the guy? Um, remember that Anna Nicole Smith married that guy that was like 90 or something like Hugh that? Hefner, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or whatever, whoever, whoever. Was but, it Hugh? Oh, no. no it was Hugh the Hefner other person. married Hugh those Hefner. like three chicks or whatever. Like he yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, all very young. Yeah, I presented a famous. Billboard Award with one of those girls, and uh, mm. she was very, very pretty. Mm. Yeah. Good for him. Holly, I believe her name was. I think I remember that on the show. Yeah. She was beautiful. Yeah, she's a really pretty lady. Good for him. Oh. Yeah. Um, can I, while we're here, I'd love to ask just like a few typical questions. Of course. If that's okay. Absolutely. Just like about the band. I, I know that you probably Let's answered do a million it. I times. like all of it. Let's do it. Um. But this is also stuff because I've been such a huge fan. Thank you. So, and the reason, like, I know we know each other. Yeah. Um, I know you because in sixth grade, it was a thing. Every day after school, I would come home. I go to yahoo.com, like, slash music videos. Yeah. And I would watch 1985 music video. (laughs) Okay. And it was a routine every day I got home from school. Um, I was obsessed. I was obsessed with Bowling for Soup obsessed and so i that's how long i've been a fan yeah so after i did the show yep. on ink master um uh maybe i think you've started following me from that i on. started following you from from that because uh well first of all because you were awesome but secondly you were from denton texas yes. and so i'm like holy shit this girl's from denton and she's badass and so yes i started following you thank you go ahead 
Um, and we got into, I, 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 I had a story on my Instagram where yep. I was singing Ohio, I believe. Right. And I With think, you, yeah. yeah. And I think you reached out. Before that. Was it before? Before that, you posted a, sto- a story about mental health. And I, I, I responded to you, but you didn't see it. Oh, my God. Then the Ohio thing happened, and I responded to you. Or I, and I was, I was just like, yeah. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think then you followed me back, and then you were like, holy shit, you messaged me about this mental health thing. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and and I remember you saying you're like, yeah, I'm a fan, and I was like, <laughs> 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 like I wanted to. Th- that was like probably still the greatest moment. Of my oh, life. stop! I'm, like, <laughs> like, I'm a huge fan of you. you know, I, yeah. That was like, I, I you yeah. can't even imagine how I felt when you, you were my pick to win, and I, I, uh, I actually, I, 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 I didn't even tiptoe around it. I just knew you were gonna win. So like I was telling everybody, like, oh my God, there's this girl from Denton. She's really young and she's gonna fucking win Ink Master. Like it's it's gonna happen. She's gonna fucking win. I just knew it. And uh, because you, I, I don't know. We can get into that if you want, but um, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that, that's how I became a fan. Um, of you, yeah. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, it's still, it, it's so fucking crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then we got to know each other mm-hmm. and like even got it, it came to your Christmas party. Had like, you guys come to the final Warp Tour? You guys yeah, as dude, my guests? Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I tattooed your neck. You let us come to the final Warp Tour, which was the coolest experience the, yeah, getting to be backstage the, on yeah. your show and yeah. everything. And I just learned to be like, People, some people are like, don't meet your, your heroes or anything like that. But you have been like the most genuine person. Thank you. Um, one of the most genuine people I've ever met. Thank and you. it's been so cool getting to know you. Yeah. And for everyone watching too, like, like this man, like there's so many people just in the community who know him and say the same thing as I do. Like Thank people you. know you as like a great person. Thank you. And even when I tattooed you, we got to talk about mental health yeah. and you're open about yeah. it. And um, yeah, you're, you're just, you're wonderful. And so I'm Thank so you. happy to have you here. Thank you. I, I feel the same. I'm glad that I've gotten to know you guys and, uh, and I'm so proud of you guys with the, for the, with the shop and just, you know, of it. It's fun to watch, you know. I, I like, I love when people, all people win. I root for everybody. Yeah. Don't hate, congratulate. Like, I think everybody, it's, you know, I'm certain that it's, it's a thing within the tattoo community, too, of like, you're either supportive or, or there's this weird unspoken competition and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I never got into the whole battle of the bands thing. Like, I, I just always like, you know, I, 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 I shouldn't be pissed at somebody for getting some opportunity or something just because I didn't Yeah, like I should be happy that they're get they're getting to do this. And that's the way that I am. I like when people win, you know, and, uh, I've, uh, I've preached that. I preach it to this day. Like I, if some, if I see somebody talking shit on the internet, it's very hard for me not to come to someone else's defense and just be like, yeah, why, why can't they, have things too. Yeah. yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You even stitch other people's videos like um, that, that are covering some of your songs yeah, yeah. and, and just to like promote them yeah. and, you know, yeah. give them a thumbs up. Like you, we all see that you're just so supportive. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I try not to say no to features. Um, I do as many as I can. I don't look at the size of the band. I just listen to the song. Um, I don't charge for features. Um, That's awesome. But, wow. I have started now asking for a donation to Punk Rock Saves Lives. So they, if, if, they're, if, if they offer to pay me, I will say, listen, I will get to this when I can. Uh, and I don't want to be paid, but I would like you to make a donation to Punk Rock Saves Lives. What and is Punk Rock Saves Lives? So Punk Rock Saves Lives is a charity on which I serve on the board of directors. Mm. Um, we do many, many things. Uh, mental health support is a big one for us, and that's how I got involved. Um, but... One of the biggest things we do is we we tour with bands, we go to festivals, and we set up, and we swab cheeks for uh, the uh, for a data registry of bone marrow transplant uh, matches. And uh, on the Bowling for Soup summer tour last year alone, because people went to that booth at our show and got swabbed, we saved four human beings. There are four human beings that are still on this planet. 
because punk rock saves lives set up somebody got their cheek swabbed they were a match we flew them to donate they donated and now there's four wow. human beings oh, that wouldn't be here anymore wow. and that's just bowling for soup so oh, but incredible. we do that we're 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 always on tour uh, our our um our founders tina and rob are always on the road but we've got volunteers out there constantly going to shows if they can't swab then um you know we pass out feminine hygiene products we 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 pass out covid tests pregnancy tests we uh the the uh, we we have fentanyl testing kits that we will just give you um wow. you know it's that's so uh, awesome. it's you know it's it's a that's a thing. So yes, I work with them, but I should say also that I work with a local charity here called Foundation Forty Five. That uh, is is a similar. Uh, we 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 help a lot of musicians, recovering addicts, uh, battered women, uh, but also a very big mental health aspect to that charity as well. And so I would uh, I would. I, I, I definitely needed to mention that because I gave yeah. I, I work with both and, and yeah. a charity event that I, I donated for a couple of years ago at a pristine yeah too. yeah very cool yeah um, that's so like when did you decide that you really wanted to get into this and help people and give back yeah so um, well from a mental health standpoint um, it was a bit of a journey for me uh, I I didn't have any bouts with mental health or with uh, with depression or and I don't I, I guess I had felt anxiety before but you know to me I would just describe it as like oh you know when you get that feeling when you pass a cop going 80 and a 30 you know and that feeling in your stomach like I have that sometimes and I'm like but I I, I, I didn't really realize it didn't take over my days yeah um until I, I, uh, so I started going through my divorce, uh, and so at, at all of within a year, I uh, went through a divorce, big custody battle for my children, um, mm. who are grown now and awesome. Uh, but I moved to a new city. I, uh, I started dating my wife. Now, you know, I uh, we had to, our our son. Um, I adopted my my son. Uh, you know. I, Basically, when I talk to a doctor about this, they're like, any one of those things could have sent you into a spiral and all of this happened to you at one time. Ugh. But yeah. I found myself uh, in, a, in a pretty bad spot for about two years. And I was going to break the band up. Uh, we actually did a final farewell tour to the UK because I, I, they didn't know it yet, but I was going to quit. And uh, so I just suffered. And, uh, and I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't really know what was wrong with me. I just honestly thought I was lazy and that I just didn't have any drive anymore. And, uh, it, it's, it's a blessing that I had the, just the medical doctor I had, just my general practitioner. I started talking to him about it. And, uh, so I started going down the road of trying to be on meds and that was the last thing. I'm not a medic. I'm not a, a big medicine guy. Um, I come from a, from a family of addicts. Um, you know, my, both my parents are, have been in AA since I was in the third grade. And, uh, my brother is, is a recovering addict and, uh, it's so all that. And, and, you know, I do drink, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how you put it. Like I definitely drink more than most people, but I don't have to drink every day. Like yeah. it's not yeah. that kind of thing. Not like an alcoholic. I drink to get drunk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's, I, I like to party. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, so I've just never really been into medicine. Well, I've had ulcerative colitis since I was 19. So I've already on that pills for that. Right. Mm. And, uh, then I, uh, I take, you know, obviously allergy pills. Anyway, point is, is that I didn't, I, like a lot of people, I did not want to take medicine, mm. yeah. but I tried it and it didn't go well at first. And this is one of the things that I want to get across to anybody who's listening to this. And I always try to say this is that like what my doctor said to me just really resonated because there's not a magic pill if there was a magic pill we'd all take it and none of us would would have mental yeah. health issues so he goes some of this is going to work for you some of it's not some of it you're going to like some of it you're not some of it is going to make you a zombie some of it you're is going to make you crazy we're going to have to figure it out mm. and it took a couple of years uh for me to feel okay again um 
And uh, so I went, I took everything, you know, I, I, I went down the Prozac and the Wellbutrin and the whatever. I settled on, uh, I'm on a real small dose of Lexapro and I take Effexor, mm. um, which normally in my shrink now who does my meds is like, it's not really a combination that we, that I would, but, but it works. Right. But the thing is, is that you also, once you find the medicine that works, you have to find like at what level you want to be, because right. what happened with me is it got me so controlled that I wasn't creative anymore. Mm. Like I, I, I wasn't like, I, I was just sort of being, yeah. you know, and I wasn't depressed, but I just was, you know, so as that dose kind of gets down, then I'd be like, man, dude, I'm just like, I'm standing in the garage and I just start crying for no reason. He goes, mm, okay, well we could fix that. But how's creativity going? I'm yeah. like, I wrote seven songs this yeah, week. He's yeah. like, okay, so, <laughs> you know, we're, we've got to figure out what the balance is. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I just start crying sometimes for no reason. Um, but I'm creative as shit, you yeah. know, and that's where I'm at still after all this time. <clears throat> but I go to therapy. Uh, I see a therapist. I, uh, we, my wife and I go to couples counseling uh, as a rule um, to always make sure that we're communicating uh, and always make sure that that we're not only taking care of each other, but taking care of ourselves as individuals as well. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I communicate with my psychiatrist about my medication, and uh, and I'm doing good. So the question was, why did I decide to start talking about it, and why did I make it a thing? So the last thing that I wanted was to come out publicly about this, because I feared a backlash because I'm in a funny band, because the content that I put out uh, even back then, I, I am sort of just known as this happy guy. And I was just like, man, and, and it sort of did happen, but not a lot. I mean, it, it was uh, once I, so I, I did this thing for foundation 45. Um, Peter, um, who was the singer for slow Roosevelt is also a psychiatrist. And, uh, he interviewed me about mental health. It's the first time I ever talked about it. And as I left that interview, I was like, I got to talk about this. Like, I, I can't, I can't, it's not fair for me to, <clears throat> to just keep this inside. Mm. If there's somebody out there that would get something from my story and get help. If I, if there's one guy that doesn't, you know, for fear of, for lack of a better term, jump off a fucking bridge. If, if, if I can, one person doesn't do that because I share my story, yeah. then I have to do it. And so I did. I started posting about it, and I, 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 uh, I had actually. It's funny when I did that first interview. Sorry, this is a long answer, but when I did yeah. that first interview, I even told my publicist. I said, "Hey, I did an interview about mental health. That I don't want everybody asking me about mental health. Like, I, that's not what yeah. I'm not making this a thing. This is not a cause for me." And a week later, I said. Hey, all that shit I said, forget it. They can that, ask yeah. me about mental health. This is a cause for me, you know? And so, yeah, I've gotten a couple, oh, the funny fat guy, you know, duh, you thought oh, you're sad. I'm sorry or whatever. But it's like, man, I, I hope that your day gets better, man. I, I really do. Because for the most part, what I get is, hey, man, I heard your story. I talked to my doctor. I got help. You, you saved my life. Or maybe you didn't save my life. You saved my marriage. Or maybe you saved my job or whatever it is. Maybe I didn't even save them. Maybe I just made it to where they could communicate about it. It doesn't matter. Point is, is that I just something went off and it was like, dude, you have to share your story. Yeah. And uh, oh so that's God. why yeah. when you, yeah, sorry, uh, that's why when you, um, uh, sorry, when, yeah. when you shared that post, um, you know, it really meant a lot. And I, I saw you were struggling and I was just like, man, it's so brave of you to put that out because it really does. It takes a lot, mm. you know, it really does. And I, that yeah. I appreciate you sharing that <laughs> yeah. with me too. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's the reason why I want to as well. It's, it's like, uh, you know, at first it's like, do I want to share this and talk right. about it all the time? Right. And like people are at my page because they want to see tattoos yeah. or right. something. And like, but it's because those few people that reach out and they're like, yeah, you, you, you saved my life. Yeah. Or like, because you talked about this, I yeah. didn't feel like I was alone or something like that. That's the big thing. So that's what I talk about at shows now. So when you come to a Bowling for Soup show, it's fun where everybody's happy. We're talking about farting, dicks. <laughs> 
uh, everything, like the whole show, like there's just everything is fun or whatever, but there is one moment in each show where I let every single person know, and my band is fine with this. They, they all get off the mic, and I get my m- couple of minutes to just say, hey, somebody in this room is struggling, and they've, they're, they're, they can't communicate it. So if you're not struggling, be a good listener. Be a good friend. Mm-hmm. At, check in on people. And if you are struggling, you're not alone because yeah. I am depressed as shit. And if I can be depressed, anybody can because I have a great life. Great life. I had a great childhood. Everything's perfect. I'm very, very happy person. Yeah. But depression doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. No. My grandmother, she'd tell me, why are you sad? You got a good life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's just it, right? And that's – so that – Herein lies that whole thing of like, and especially in some parts of our culture, there's like the suck it up, go to work, you know, or rub some dirt on it. And, you well, know, that especially whole thing. for men, too. Yes. Yeah. And thank you for bringing that up because it is. It's a very hard stigma for men to be able to talk about it. But you know what, man? I'll tell you, my, I know for a fact that some of the most masculine men on this planet who beat the shit out of you are on depression medication because they talk to their doctor, you know, like it's, it's, it does not, it does not make you weak. In fact, it makes you stronger if you take action and help yourself. Yes. Yes. It takes so much strength to be vulnerable. 100%. Just to yourself, let alone another person or a doctor and tell them what's going on. Absolutely. Well, and, and I just, I just want to, uh, apply both of you for using your platform to share that Thank because you, it's so tough to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. you know, especially with, with, with people, you know, especially with strangers, especially when you have a brand where you're like, Oh, people like me cause I'm funny and I do music or exactly. people like me cause I want to do tattoos. So it's, it's already hard enough to be vulnerable and to share that. And to, and you know, especially with social media, you know, everybody's sharing the good stuff in their life. 100%. Nobody really talks about that. So to go out of your way to, share what you're struggling with yeah. to use your platform for that. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. And it's so yeah. tough to do. And, and I applaud you both Thank you. for doing that. Thank you. And I think it's important to note that like, we're not, I, I think I speak for you when I say this, I, I, I'm not after your sympathy. I'm not, to be honest, absolutely. I'm not really after anybody's support. I don't need that. I have my support structure. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sharing to, to benefit other people. And so if I'm having a low tide and I put that out on the internet or whatever, like I'm not asking you to go, oh, buddy, you know, you're fine. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm putting it out there so that you know, oh, my God, this dude that I've been watching on TV since I was in the sixth grade, this guy that tours the world, this dude that's doing arenas in the UK now, like that guy has, he's got the same shit that I do, you know, because I'm just a human being. We're human beings. Absolutely. You know? it, it still like inspires me and means so much to me. And I, that, that feeling that, that you have to like on your medicine and yeah. you're talking about like losing your creativity. I just started like new medicine and yeah. I feel like, um, I'm feeling a lot of that kind yeah. of stuff lately. Yeah. And so, even just now, just hearing you talking, talking about it, I'm mm-hmm. like, man, okay, maybe like I'm not lazy. Like mm-hmm. I just, yeah. And it's, and you know what? I mean, that stuff, so you got to stick with it, right? Because it takes six to eight weeks to even yeah. really know how you're going to do it. And you know what? Unfortunately, after that, you might have to adjust. You might have to start different things. But it's just a matter of being honest with yourself and your doctor. And you know what? And that here's the other thing is you can be on shit for two years. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, this isn't working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. By the way, never stop taking medication because <laughs> you think you're, you're good. <laughs> Uh, cause I ran out of Lexapro over a, uh, over a Christmas holiday, um, about three years ago and I was fine. So I was just like, fuck it, man. I guess I don't need this anymore. And I stopped taking it and it took about six weeks for it to get out of my system. I guess that's, that's something. Yeah. <sighs> And once that was out of there, like that Lincoln Park lyric crawling out of your skin or whatever is like, that's real. Like it, 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 my body was trying to get out of itself and it took months for me to get back. It it was, it Uh. was very, very hard. So, uh, you know, you're not a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. So, you know, it's interesting your story about Lexapro. So I, I also took Lexapro back when I was in college and I went to my doctor and 
it's it's kind of I'm glad that you have a good doctor because sometimes it's it's all you know I feel like it's too easy these days to get on medi- yeah, medication because right. I went to the doctor I told him I was sad he's like all right here's a prescription for Lexapro yeah <laughs> and totally. uh, did no therapy didn't have any follow up visits anything like that so I very much went about it the wrong way yeah. but so I was on Lexapro and um, I was a music major at the time so I was not not creating as much but I was practicing all the time yeah and that what I felt was that insane drive that I had, you know, to uh, better myself as a musician, that also, I wasn't depressed anymore, but that got lower too. So it was like, you know, if you imagine a mixing board, it wasn't just like somebody turned down the depression knob. It was like somebody turned down the master. And so I felt like I was just kind of numb. Yeah. And um, then I, because of that, I realized that. And then I just stopped it cold turkey, which... um, I didn't know until years later that I shouldn't have done. But yeah, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> thank God, nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing bad happened to me after that. Right. But um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to ask, like, so what's your, um, so you're you're on medication now, and yeah. you go to therapy regularly. Yeah, and now I, mine is not just for my doctor anymore. I have my medication regulated by a psychiatrist. So, but and what, uh, uh, and people might not know this, so I'll, this I will tell you. I think a lot of people think as a psychiatrist is the same as a psychologist or a therapist. It's not like yeah, when I yeah, go yeah. into my psychologist, it is literally to talk about the medications, how I'm feeling about said medication. Like, I don't tell them about my day. You know, yeah. I'm not in there to like this. So I go to a, an actual therapist to talk about, you know, my whatever is happening in my life that is that is either making me happy or sad or whatever. And then, you know, you go down those paths. Um Man, I can't recommend therapy enough. Oh, I, yeah. I honestly, yeah. I, it's the scariest shit to start. <laughs> okay. But it is, honestly, man, I've never had a therapy experience where I went in and was bummed I went. Not once. Like, yeah, I, And I've, yeah. I've had many therapists over the years because for whatever reason. Uh, but I, um, well, not many. I mean, I'm, I think I'm on my fourth right now. Uh, and that includes the couples therapist that we still see monthly just as a tune up, whatever, yeah. Again, making, making sure that we're communicating, which I, I, I don't, that, I, I think that's also something couples should do, but everybody should go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cause it is <clears throat> just being able to get in there and get in touch with just your own thoughts to be able to just, to talk to somebody that, that is just there to to seriously to just to listen and just sort of like help you. Oh wait, hold on. You're going off the path a little bit here. Let's, uh, let's get this over yeah. here. And it's, but it's scary. It's scary to start, but especially for men, you know, yeah. we're all men that go to couples counseling, especially you think you're going to go in there and they're going to team up on you and everything you do is wrong. And every single time I've thought that it went the opposite way. And it was just like, yeah, we'll fucking see, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. And, and now, I mean, I'm not famous, but uh, I would like to advocate for therapy as well. Um, yeah. uh, something that I started doing uh, earlier this year and before that, um, never had, I didn't believe in therapy for lack yeah. of a better word. I was like, you know, I don't think this is going to help. And it's been so great. And I, and I went through a couple of therapists to find the right one. Yes. And, and, and so I never felt bummed that I went, but you know, there were some therapists I went to that I was like, I feel like, you know, maybe I could be getting a little bit more out of this. And mm-hmm. I finally found a good therapist and just being able even even if they're just listening yep. and yes, they provide, you know, little corrections. I yep. think a good therapist should, mm-hmm. but there's, you know, there's so much stuff that you say in therapy that you just never say to anybody else. Yep. And it might be stuff you think, but getting it out there, especially to somebody mm-hmm. is different. And yep. sometimes it just gives you a different perspective on it. And so going to therapy has helped me so much. And at the beginning I wasn't on medication. And yeah. one thing that I really loved about it is I, would have anxiety throughout the week. I would have, you know, crippling anxiety that just would ruin my day. Yeah. And medication has helped me with that. Uh, not to get too much into my personal stuff, sure. but, um, just when something would happen, just knowing that, okay, I don't have to think about this all day. I can talk about it with somebody mm-hmm. in a few days, somebody who knows me, who I trust. Um, so that was just, it was really life changing for me. Yeah. And, um, I'm in a spot right now where I'm, I'm on a, I really like the medication I'm on, you know, I'm not, experiencing that crippling anxiety or depression right now, Good. I still go and I still benefit from it just because I think, um, much like couples counseling, I think it's just, I, I think everybody should do it. It's, it's very beneficial. Just at least have that checkup, yeah. that tune in. To and just, good for you, by the way. I mean, 
that it's so hard to stop, but also to just go, ah, I think I could have a better relationship or I could have a better, so that, that's brave as fuck, man. You know, cause that's, that's not easy to, 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 because honestly starting therapy sucks, but restarting therapy. And I don't mean it sucks. Yeah. I mean like it, you have this buildup that you, it, everybody hates it. Yeah. Until you get in there. But like what I could say is, is that, and, and, and I could just see you sort of like, and it, it what, the way that I describe it is, is I don't go to, to the chiropractor regularly, but sometimes when you go to a chiropractor, when you walk out, you feel a little taller. Like when you go to yoga, when yeah. you leave yeah. yoga, you feel yeah. like you're a little taller than you were when you got in there. That's how I feel when I walk out of therapy. Like my yeah. chest is up a little bit and my shoulders are, oh my God, there's like this. Uh, there's this release in my body. It's just all this tension and stuff. And it's yeah. magical, man. Man. So I'm sorry. I'm getting like choked up, like thinking about it a little bit, but I remember like, especially like at the end of my first therapy sessions, mm -hmm. you know, w when I had my, my therapist now that I, I really love, um, just, I, I would like tear up at the end of it a little yeah. bit just because just having that mm -hmm. outlet, it's, it's, it's like a, just a huge, weight off your shoulders you yeah. know, to be able to discuss that with somebody. So it is, it's an incredible feeling. Yeah. But even that emotional release, you know, like my, our couples counselor will, I'll, I'll get to crying in there and she'll just be like, you gotta, gotta get that out of yeah. there. And she's not wrong, man. You get that like emotional release of, of like, I don't know what it is, man, but you know, I'm not scared to cry as you guys yeah. saw earlier. I, you know, and, and, uh, so thank you for being so vulnerable. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, if you're, you're famous to me, you're fucking, <laughs> you're fucking Colton <laughs> bass drum SMU motherfucker. <laughs> well, well, thanks man. Yeah. I, um, yeah. And then, and then even getting out of those sessions, you know, there would definitely be times where I just, just, just cried, you know, just sat yeah. by myself in my office, you know, and, oh, yeah. and just got it out and I always felt better after that you know so. sometimes I sit in the car after counseling and I just sit there 10 minutes 15 minutes sometimes I put music on sometimes I don't I start the car run the AC because you know I don't give a shit about the environment I'm 51 <laughs> <laughs> and it's not your problem <laughs> it's not my problem my kids can deal with this that's why I had them uh no but but seriously I will sit there for 10 or 15 minutes and just like breathe also, it's hot as fuck. And it's hot as fuck outside. Yeah. Yeah. You pretty much half of the AC. We live in Texas, man. You know? Yeah. yeah. I love that I'm, I'm, I have a, we're sitting here in a podcast and I'm with two men talking about therapy and being vulnerable. And I'm just, I'm taking a moment for a second because I, it's, I, I hope a lot of men are seeing this too. And yeah. just seeing like, again, yeah. Like yeah. how, I, I hope you go to therapy if you're yeah. a guy who hasn't been. Um, and just to see how normal it is and yeah. how good it can be for you. And accessible too. I mean, you can do it oh, on, your, yeah, on your, I mean, you know, one of the sponsors of, of what, one of my podcasts is BetterHelp. And you can go, you go to betterhelp.com and enter code ROCKSTAR and you can get 10% off your first. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm half kidding. Half kidding. <laughs> But no, but seriously, uh, no, but seriously, I mean, like, but that's just it. Like you, you, it's, it's so accessible to you. It's, it's on, uh, it's online or it's what, so my, now my guy, um, I drive all the way down. In fact, it's right down the street. So I come once a week, uh, and, and he's like, you can move to online if you want. And I'm like, I like to drive there and yeah, the drive back. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like, I like having to get out and it's, you know what, if, if nothing else, it's 40 minutes of time by myself there and back. And then, and I'm, so I've just spent, you know, the better part of three hours and I, it's all for me. Yeah. You know, and I deserve that, you know, and, and, yeah, yeah. and, and, uh, so, so yeah, man, I don't, I don't do the online, but it's at least it's there if I want it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I feel like, you know, if you're struggling with depression or anxiety or mental health at all, like the, the only thing you have to lose by, trying to get help is admitting to yourself that you need it. And that's so, part. so tough for people, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's can be potentially like life saving and, and if not definitely life changing. Yeah. But it's changed interesting my life point. for sure. Interesting point. Cause the, the first thing that usually happens to me is, uh, or not to me, but someone will reach out and they'll go, Hey, I've, I've heard what you said about mental health. How do I get started? And I'm like, you just did. Yeah, you just reached yeah. out and you, and you, that's the first thing. Just honestly, it's, what is it? The, for any sort of 
mental or, or physical, ail, uh, you know, alcoholism, whatever. I mean, the, you've got to admit that there's a situation here that you need help with. Yeah. Well, it's exactly like you said for two years, you were like, you just thought you were lazy or, yeah, or, or something totally. like that. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's, that's, yeah, you're so right. That's the yeah. first step is, it, it, you know, admitting, okay, I've, I've got this issue. Yeah. I've got to do something about it. Yeah. You can't, you know, again, it's, it's, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's such a big part of the story for me going, I can't be depressed. I'm the happiest person I know. Like, there's no way. It doesn't make any sense. But I think what happens is, is we equate depression with sadness. Yeah. As your grandmother said, right? Yes. And you're like, it's not sadness like you think. I didn't just watch the fox and the hound. You know right? what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. not <laughs> sad like that. Yeah. It's not. And to me, it's not even really. Gosh, it's been so long since I've really, really felt it. Like since it's got me, it gets me a day here or a day there, but I don't, I, luckily, because of the work that I've done, uh, depression doesn't really grab me all that often anymore. Uh, anxiety will get me from time to time. It's mostly because I'm not taking care of myself. Um, you know, mostly it'll be like, cause I'm on tour and I'm eating like shit, I'm drinking too much. Yeah. And uh, it just finds that little, weak part of you and just goes oh okay so we're open now all right bam and you're just like i can't function yeah. you know yeah. um but yeah man and I, I feel like depression a, a good name for that at least for me would be hopelessness yes 100 percent. that's yeah. what depression is yeah for me there is a hopelessness uh yeah and and you know what and it's it's different for everybody right yeah. i mean you know but you know i think <clears throat> but you got to give yourself a break on the creativity thing you know because Again, there's no magic pill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you also talked about couples therapy, too, because that's um, a new thing that we started because mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it'd be cool for like a tune up and, and stuff. That's what it is. And even our therapist was like, yeah, you know, I'm proud. Like more people should like come for tune ups. And I think that's great because you don't want it to come to a point mm -hmm. where like things are are bad you know yeah, like or you need to go to a great. therapist to like resolve something you yeah know? we're doing great we want i want to keep it up you want to keep it great also like a sense of just like closeness yes. and um uh connection connection 100%. especially when like you're busy a lot mm -hmm. and you have to spend so much time doing your craft doing your business it's yep. just like a moment where we tune into each other well right? and you'd be su yeah sorry yeah. didn't mean to cut you off i just I would also suggest that for everybody. Yeah. I was just going to say, you'd be surprised at what comes out in therapy too. Mm -hmm. Not just like, I feel like myself when I'm in therapy and you know, I'll just get thoughts out there or words out there that, you know, maybe I hadn't realized, but, um, you know, with couples therapy, there's already been moments we've had maybe a few sessions where you say something that I didn't, I didn't know yeah. about you. And, uh, yeah, it just adds that layer of closeness because it's not something that you would normally talk about, you know, but talking about other things, it just kind of gets that out sometimes yeah. especially if one or more partner has anxiety or depression mm -hmm. it's good to do couples counseling because you're around your partner all the time yeah. and it'd be nice for them to understand more of what you're feeling because it's so easy for your partner to blame themselves for your oh, man. anxiety and depression too that's so i'm a fixer and i didn't realize i was a fixer mm -hmm. and so this is a very great point um and i'm if if we're going long on this we can change but whatever but i Casey also has anxiety. Uh, hers is way different or whatever. But yeah, that's just it, right? Like, if I'm anxious, I'm like, yeah, I'm anxious. You know, leave me alone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If she's anxious, I'm like, I, well, not anymore. But the way that I was reacting to that is, why? What's going on? What's the deal? What do you need? What's blah, blah, blah? You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, it's like the, the first thing you learn in couples counseling is you, you're not in control of your partner's emotions. Yeah. And you're certainly not uh, responsible for their feelings. It's a broad, broad statement, but it's true. You can't help how they feel. You know, they are going to feel the way that they feel. But yeah, I mean, I think that's the other thing is, is uh, when you're in a relationship and both of you have anxiety, learning to be on the other side of it was hard for me. It was, um, is very like having it was its own thing, but now this deal where it's like, wait a minute, you have it too. Like, what's the, okay, well let's, let's figure this out. And it's like, Casey's like, you know, it took therapy for her to go. I don't want you to fix this. This is not yeah. your shit. You know, just let me, let me deal with it. 
you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's that been the coolest thing for us for couples therapy is me realizing that I was a fixer because I'm in so much control over everything in my life because, you know, I run my band. I run, you know, I, I am... I work for myself in the voiceover thing. Like I, nobody's really t- told me what to do my entire adult life. So like if something's broken, I'm responsible for that. If, if we forget a symbol at a club, I've got to, if, even if it's delegating it, I've got <clears throat> to figure out how to get that symbol back to Bowling for Soup on the road. That's on me. Mm. I can fix that. But, you know, relationships aren't Ooh. like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it goes deep. Yeah, it goes deep. I'm proud of you guys, though. That's that's awesome. Proud of Good you for guys. y'all. I'm glad we got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, too. yeah, me too. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't even wasn't even on my radar for things to talk about today, but I feel like this has been like definitely like one of the conversations that I've enjoyed most yeah. since Good. we started doing I'm that so show. Glad. So, man, yeah, I really man. appreciate you coming on and talking about this. Man, I uh, you know as I said when we started, I'm an open book. You know, I'll I'll talk about anything and and. Uh, Quite frankly, I can be a little too open at times, but uh, I, I don't, um, you know, I'm not ever going to be able to run for office because I'm too honest <laughs> about literally everything, including my penis. If we talk about it. It's adorable. Um, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, no, I appreciate the, I appreciate the outlet. I appreciate the, 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 you know, let me talk about this and you guys, uh, I've learned something today too. So you know, that's it's like co-writing. You know, it's like a tattooing. It's. Uh, I wonder if tattooing is like songwriting in this aspect. I learn something from every single time I sit down with another songwriter, no matter their experience level. Like I used mm-hmm. to manage a group of twelve-year-old girls, and me and the singer for that. She's in Nashville now, writing songs or whatever. And oh, she's uh, an adult, not didn't your, they, didn't not your perf- girlfriend. Yeah. Didn't they perform at Warped Tour? They did. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wonderful, right? So they're not a band anymore, but they're all doing music and successful in their own little ways. But me and Liv wrote her first songs together, and she was 12 years old. And every single session, I would learn something. Yeah. Is tattooing the same kind of thing, like when you sit down like that? Yeah, and th- that's why we have seminars that we teach each other and yeah. collaborations yeah. and stuff, just like songwriting yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I, it's it's incredible i feel like no matter how old you are how uh, much you've done whatever you've been doing yeah. if you've stopped learning mm-hmm. you might as well quit it gets 100%. really boring yeah you know yeah. if you've known everything 100 percent. what what is it how has it been i don't mean to interview you but i am super curious about this yeah because for so many years even on the show that you were on and and you know, you have to make your own tattoo gun and we're not doing this wireless thing and we're not doing the quiet ones. And like, it seems like everybody's sort of like gone, all right, we're going to let technology help us out here, you know, and, and they're using the wireless thing and they're not, you know, it seems like everybody's kind of coming around. Absolutely. Is that sort of new in that people are giving in? <laughs> yeah. And are just more accepting. Yeah. I think just because there's an influx of artists in the industry yeah. and people that are making a name for themselves and not going to like the old school tattooers that will treat you like shit right. and they're mm-hmm. not dealing with that. They're learning from, um, I, I, I don't know if, how I want to call it higher end tattooers. I don't know. Right. But like for me, like I teach my apprentices what's going to help them tattoo. I'm not going to tell them to clean the baseboards with the toothbrush and how to right. build a machine if that's not what's going to help them. Right. And I truly want to help people. Mm-hmm. And most, a lot of tattooers still in the industry that are from, you know, they've been tattooing for a long time. They don't want to keep up with the times. Um, yeah. Man, they well, just... Yeah. I feel like it's almost like inevitable with the technology thing. So like the iPad's a good example. Like everybody designs right. on the iPad nowadays. Yeah. Um, and like Bobby Johnson did a seminar. How long has Bobby been tattooing? For like a long time. He's yeah, like a million years. Yeah. So he like grew up around old school tattooers. And like one of the first things he said, he was like, okay, does everybody in here use an iPad? Okay, good. If you don't fucking start using it, <laughs> yeah, like, right? it just saves you so much time right. as opposed to like drawing, redrawing it, even like stenciling stuff or before you used to have to stencil by hand. Like yeah. I've, I've been around the tattoo industry for like five years and I like, I can't even comprehend like making a design like without an iPad. So I feel like 
at some point, like it just gets so essential and that it saves so much time. Oh my God. That as, yeah. uh, I, I mean, as long as you're not the most stubborn motherfucker on earth and you're like, oh, I'd never do this. Like you're like, okay, I've got to start doing this because yeah. it's going to save me as a, a million client. Hours waiting for them to draw that out and then oh yeah and then they go to the copy machine and they do the thing and they you know and then ah it's not the right size and then you, it just that it's it's a painful thing to yeah. just because you're, you're just sitting you know yeah and, uh, and the reason why it wasn't updated is because it was a stigma sure and including like how you treat your apprentices mm -hmm. and, and all of that it was just it was just a stigma um but the industry has just changed so much because people are coming forward. And I, I feel like it's crazy that it goes hand in hand with like using the new technology and it being more accepted and yeah. also treating people like human beings in the industry. Right? It's going hand in hand because everyone was like, oh, tradition, tradition, tradition. Mm -hmm. But that's not the best way to think. And it's people who are afraid to grow and people to surpass them that yeah. want to keep it that way. Yeah. And to me also, like it's such a, Tattoo just not only though did those that the old school people treat their apprentices like shit. To be honest, like when you walked into a tattoo shop when I was a, when I was a young adult, it was intimidating, and yeah. they intimidated you, yeah. and they and they sort of like didn't really have the time for you, and it's whatever, and like you know you can look at you know whatever, fuck off, and or they wouldn't even talk to you or whatever, and now you walk into a place and you're just like, this is fucking beautiful. Like, I want to just <laughs> come hang out here, yeah. you know, and just fucking, like, yeah. I'll just set up an office right over there. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, you've got somebody at the desk and they're welcoming you and they're like, hey, can I get you something to drink? And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, you're, not only is it that, you know, you're spending a lot of money on this thing or whatever, but like, you're putting something on your body forever. You might as well be, it might as well be a good experience. Yeah, for sure. And and that that's one of the things that I want to incorporate into Eden's mission just from, from the get-go is, you know, days happen all the time, but when you get tattooed, it stays on you forever. And so that's an experience yeah. that you take with you forever. So, I mean, it, it blows my mind when people can't, like, remember the name of their tattoo artist. <laughs> maybe yeah. once you get enough tattoos, like, at some point, it does get to be that. But I, I never want somebody to come in here and, like, you know, not remember their experience or have a bad experience much less. Right. So, you know, cause they're going to remember that forever. Every time you look at that part of that mm -hmm. is the experience of that tattoo. So I always want to make sure that everybody has a very nice memorable, memorable experience. It's you know? definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's so funny cause it's like so night and day to where, you know, how we got all uh, the majority of all the stuff that we have. And when I say we, I mean bowling for soup cause we're, the same person. I mean, we we're literally together all the time for 30 years. And a lot of the times when we've gotten tattooed, we're getting them <clears throat> because we have a guy on our bus. Like we're getting a tattoo in a bus or we're getting a tattoo in a bathroom at a yeah, bar or yeah. something like that. You know, there's just so many of those experiences that we've had or whatever. So and you fun. walk, walk into this place and you're just like, my God, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is so nice. Well, we talked about this a little bit on the episode that we just did with Cass, which is, isn't out yet at the time of recording this, but I feel like social media has kind of helped transform the tattoo industry because mm -hmm. nowadays, like you can't, get away with as much shit as far as like treating people like shit or like dude even fucking with google reviews like anybody can go decide where they want to get yeah. tattooed at based on other people's experiences so i feel like with the internet and just getting more accessible like people have a little bit more pressure now to treat artists well to treat clients yeah. well yeah you know? i i remember like and just taking that a step further you know i remember um at fry street inc in denton they had a female tattoo artist. He was one of the co-owners of the shop back when I was a kid. And that's like the only chick I ever saw do tattoos. Yeah. You know? And then you, then I remember, you know, you started seeing them on TV a little bit. And then now you have so it's such a, it's honestly, I, I y'all are just better. Girls are just better <laughs> at it, man. I, I, they just are like, I mean, I'll it's, take it's it. <laughs> I mean like I, I have tattoos on me from you and Dre uh, and it's like, I, I mean, I, they're the, I mean, they're the tattoos that when people see, they go, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's crazy. But, um, and actually the thing that I love about my, my neck is that, uh, people will see my tattoo because, and this is thanks social media, right? They'll see it and they'll go, is that a Deanna Smith? Stop. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's happened. It happens all the time. And obviously Deanna James now, but yeah. you know, you, you, it, they'll, they'll go, wow. that's a Deanna, that's a Deanna James. That's a Deanna Smith. 
happens all the time. Like drive throughs and shit. Like I'll be like, Stop. I'll be at like Taco Bueno and, they're just, and the guy will be like, dude, I've been looking at her stuff. And, you, and I'm just like, yeah, man, she's the goat. That is so fun. And that's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know? I would be like, it's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. I, but even just the artists that you guys bring through here, man, it's, it's, uh, and I, I, obviously I'm being, Silly, the dudes are y'all are okay too, but um, <laughs> no, it's just it's been cool to watch because it's new. The too. influx of the female tattoo artists being, I mean, there's there's full shops like Vixen that it's just they're all female. Yeah, well, same thing with Electric Fields and we're Electric not, Fields we're not, as well. Yeah, yeah, we're not exclusively female, but I mean, we've we've got two male artists and the rest are, are right. female. Um, I'm we've just hired another videographer that's a male, but even our support staff is like you know primarily female. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. And it is. Yeah, cool. I think it, I think it makes for a better shop. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. No, no offense to the the shops. With it certainly out there, smells but, better. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's our thing uh, that you know we we would when every, anytime we'd have a girl on the bus like whether it was a uh, the Dolly Rots would tour with us and we'd have Kelly on the on the bus or a merch girl or whatever and be like for the first week it's like oh man it smells better on here and then you're just like <laughs> yeah y'all smell just as bad as we do yeah. actually it's uh, <laughs> fucking gross um, <laughs> uh, yeah not not to get too far about it uh, but I was thinking on the way up here I just want to just quickly mention how fucking awesome of an experience that was to go to Warp Tour and, and so we haven't told the story on the show before but yeah. um, you know back in this was 2019 as before shit hit the fan with COVID and um, 2018 the, was it yeah it's final Warp Tour final cross okay. country yeah yeah oh no you're right it was 19 because it was they just did it in the three spots yes that's yes. right I'm sorry yeah. you're exactly right 2019 so uh yeah Jared invited us up and uh it was uh, in Atlantic City and so it was like fucking badass it was on the beach there were a bunch of uh you know a bunch of stages like you know just like your regular warp tour and uh we got to to party with you on yeah. your bus um and uh we got to be on stage for the show and yeah man I mean I, I think anybody can appreciate the energy from your shows you know being from the crowd but being on the stage it was just yeah. it was just like a whole nother experience it was yeah. it was un unreal just definitely one of the coolest things that we've ever oh, done oh man i love that it was so cool having you guys because you know we had just met you guys were i believe newly engaged at the time mm -hmm. i think we yeah that was in what may or june i think we were right about to get married about, about yeah. to get married yeah, yeah. okay we yeah but uh, and then but yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, it was cool for me to uh, to have you guys out there, and uh, obviously it was a, a wonderful day. Yeah, and your presence, everything, like watching your shows, like you are so funny, and mm -hmm. the Thank music you. is so good. Yeah. And it's just so fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, it. and I I also like I love that you kind of are spreading into like the country genre oh, yeah. of yeah. music and mm -hmm. um just woke up like that album is fucking killer Thank it's you. like it's sentimental you touch on like your family yeah. but it's also funny and it's like yeah. this really cool like classic country music mixed with like your cool like like voice yeah. you know yeah, that's very yeah. distinctive not the most country of voices but uh but you know it's, it, it's I think working it works great it's man. Working. yeah Thank i think you. it works great Thank and you. i and i really love how uh you know it's still clearly country music but it's very like distinctly you yeah. like you know yeah. there are there are jokes sprinkled in there yeah. like bowling for soup references and it's mm -hmm. it's really cool to see and it seems yeah. like you've been having a really good time with that stuff man. it's going really great man i uh you know i i've been getting some pretty amazing compliments and shows uh Ken from Old 97s called me two days ago, and I answered the phone because it was Ken from the Old 97s, and normally I don't answer the phone. Uh, but he's just like, all right. Um, I saw you put the country thing out, and I just assumed he's just going to do this, and then he's just going to move on. See, I did, didn't think anything of it, right? And then I see you bought a van, and you're out there, and you're touring, and like every time you're off at Bowling for Soup, you're out there busting your ass, and, you're, and he goes, and it hasn't gone unnoticed, and we love you. Wow. And we want you to come do shows with us. And I was like, man, that's just that's so cool. So that like, cool, dude. But the community of Texas country has been the same way for me. Like they have really accepted me. Um, you know, I, I was a little bit leery of the whole thing because I didn't want to be an imposter. I certainly didn't want them to think, oh, this the girl the bad guys want guy is just going to come and roll in and just be country now or whatever. And it was like, look, I, I really do have a Waylon and Willie tattoo. You know, I grew up listening to this and 
this is something that I can do for me. And, and it's been very therapeutic, as you said. Like, I have a, f- a few funny songs on the on the record and a few little funny things here and there. But I also have songs about... It gets deep, I get, yeah. yeah. I talk about my divorce. I talk about my kids. I talk about my wife. I talk about my sisters that I didn't meet till I was 45 years old. Like, I talk about everything. And, and when I was writing this record, the producer and co-writer, Zach... Uh, was just like, man, people are going to lose their shit when they hear how much you're putting into the world. And, uh, but, but that's been one of the bonuses, I think, of this journey with mental health and, and just being able to be confident in the fact that I could put those things out there and, and people would actually listen to it, mm-hmm. you know? It, it was very hard for me as a songwriter, um, even in, in Bowling for Soup, the first the reason we became funny was musically was because I would write a song and anything that I would say that was from the heart, I would then twist it so that it, nobody thought that I was actually being real. Yeah. And I figured out this interesting little niche of me to be able to put my feelings into songs, but also make you laugh about it so that you didn't really think that anything sure I was, yeah, yeah, yeah not there was serious, nothing yeah. you know there's nothing serious to this and so then I started writing uh I, I did this song called you and me that uh that ended up uh, it was on the the thing with the bitch song that got us the record deal uh back in 99 and then since then I've had singles when we die and turbulence that are you know I, turbulence is like the flagship to anybody that follows me about mental health turbulence is is their song um so anyway, when I started to write the country record, I was just like, look, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to, I'm, if, if, if I'm writing a funny song like My Truck Up and Left Me, which is about your truck leaving you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll be funny. But if, if I'm going to write a song, you know, about my sisters, my brother, you know, or something like that, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take the easy way out. I'm going to let it be what it is and uh yeah it's working yeah that was, that's sure tough to do. to do yeah 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 it was scary it yeah i mean it, it really was it was you know it's, it's uh you know uh, again there's stuff on on those songs there's some things on those songs that people that i don't even talk about you know again uh that that it's not like stuff that i've put into the world before yeah even conversationally yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been really great, man. I've got, uh, got a big Dallas show coming up, um, the night before Thanksgiving with, uh, Josh Ray, Josh Ray Walker and the Vandaliers who I love very much. Oh my God. And, uh, so that's going to be huge. And then, uh, these old 97 shows are going to happen in December, but I'm on tour all November, um, at Countrywise and, uh, again in March. And then in between there, Bowling for Soup is on the road. We start our tour. Uh, by the time you watch this, we're on tour right now. And uh, wow. and then uh, back to the UK and Europe, and then uh, next year we turn thirty. Wow! Our band t- celebrates, shit. and it's twenty years of Hangover You Don't Deserve. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome! So we will be on tour all year, um, and uh, we'll be celebrating our thirtieth birthday uh, the first weekend of June here in Dallas. And uh, so yeah, music, man, I love it. It's just awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I like how um, you're still so active with yeah. it. I yeah. mean, because just I, just from what I know about touring, like, it sounds fun, yeah. but it also oh. sounds like it sucks, you yeah. know, a lot of the times. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure the more famous you get, the more glamorous it is, but <laughs> it's... it's, but I, it's I, unfortunately, I didn't get to that level of fame, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm still in the suck part. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us know when you hit it. No, but... Um, <laughs> But I'm, I mean, it just just seems so hard to like be in a, a routine, you yeah. know, you know, we talk about, you know, eating healthier or healthy habits. Yeah. Like it just seems like it'd be so tough to it's do not that. Easy. Yeah. It's gotten easier because you've got things like Uber Eats. So we can, sure, I sure. can make sure the first thing that I do when I wake up and everybody else is awake is we, I give everybody a healthy, healthy option. So it's, I look for a, a deli or, you know, something like that, that we're like, Every, those who don't eat this or don't eat that, everybody's got an option. But everybody, they don't have to eat healthy, but they at least have the option to get this sure. one thing. And that is all just because, for the most part, after the show, you're going to get pizza because that's all there is. You know, And we're trying so hard to curve that. But yeah. unfortunately, that's still... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. What's what's yeah. open that late at night? You exactly. Know? And so, and you know, we've gotten a lot better about um, 
if COVID brought you brought us one thing, it's uh, again, uh, we don't we try not to let people touch us, <laughs> which is the weirdest shit. But like when we do when we meet people, the uh, we're like, hey, listen, I I I can't hug you, yeah, because if I get sick, the whole tour gets sick. Sure, so yeah, I can fist bump you and and I stand here and talk to you as long as you want to, but I can't I can't yeah. physically touch you, yeah. And that's really helped. I mean, it, uh, wow. it's because, you know, I mean, it's, it really has like, it's, it's, we're not, get, I mean, people still get sick, but we're not getting as sick. Sure. And people sure. aren't, not everybody isn't sick the whole time. Uh, so, you know, think about that. little things like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, our hands are gross, you know, and, uh, and, you know, people, we, we used to be like everybody, you'd hug everybody and they're sweaty and, you know, and you, you shake everybody's hands and stuff like that. But if people are understanding about it. We're not social distancing. I mean, we still take a, we're going to take a picture. I'm going to put my arm around you, but, you know, don't run up, to, don't kiss me, yeah. you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know? Um, this is just a question that I just want to ask too. Um, I think for myself, anybody else who's listening, who's also a tattooer in the creative field, mm-hmm. um, we're speaking on mental health, not feeling alone. Yeah. Even though you love doing what you do mm-hmm. and you love music, yeah. is there any point in time where you just feel like your hobby is now work? Well, I am a fortunate soul in that I love what I do so much that I I don't have any hobbies. I, I my ho- it is that's what I love to do. So when people are like, my God, you work harder than anybody I've ever known. Like it's, it's, and, and I get told this a lot. Like people are like, dude, you never stop. This is insane. But it's what I love to do. You know, I mean, like yeah. I'll go play golf four times a year and I like to fish. I go fish every couple of years, you know, and my, I have a very encouraging wife who encourages me to take guy trips or to go do certain things. And that, all that's fine, but I don't play video games. Um, I don't, watch TV unless it's something I'm doing to spend time with my wife. You know, I don't, those just aren't things that, that I want to spend. I would rather spend my time. Honestly, I like making TikTok videos. You know, I like writing songs. I I love doing that. Um, The one aspect of it that, uh, that feels like work is the 23 and a half hours I'm not on stage when I'm on tour. Mm. And that that's Rob put this into perspective. He goes, that's the job. The job is the touring, the time that you're not on stage. Cause mm. you miss your family. You're bored. It's hot. It's cold. You're, you know, you can't take a, sh- there's the venue showers broken and you haven't showered in two days. You know, there's the air conditioner in the, in the bus is broken. The bus stinks. It's like, we can't, we, we did the whole last tour. I, I know this doesn't sound I realize this sounds uh, bougie, but we did the whole last tour without a refrigerator in our bus, which means we could not take food with yeah, us from yeah. the thing. So, like, there just wasn't food. Yeah. Like, if you woke up in the middle of the night and you're dying, like, there you can eat Doritos. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we didn't have the ability to – and that sucked, you know, but it's just – that's one of those things where it just kind of com- accumulates on top. And so, yeah, that's really the only thing is is that – Touring can be hard. I, I will say that uh, the last five years or so, we've managed to really, again, starting to eat a little healthier, uh, making sure that we're getting enough rest. Um, you know, we take a, we do actually do play video games now. I should have said this. We play uh, Tiger Woods Golf. We have a, <laughs> we have a PlayStation, uh, like a road case, and you open it up and the screen's already there. No and way. You, yeah, yeah. And you just take your controllers out. And so, but that's, I, I'm like, that's four of us, you know, it's usually, uh, not Chris, but so it's me, Gary, Rob, and then a crew guy and we're spending time together and we're having yeah. fun and we're yeah. laughing and shit, you know, and, and, and we're not watching bar rescue, you know? And it's like, um, but yeah, I mean, it can definitely seem, uh, it's not glamorous, man. You know, it's, uh, most wives can't hang. Uh, my wife is a trooper. She can come out for two or three days and do just fine. But yeah. most of the wives don't want anything to do with this shit. <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah. It, and it, but it was super cool that she was there for the, you know, the Atlantic City show. Oh, yeah. I can't, well, you guys were on tour at that point, right? But we was, were. Yeah. That we shorter. toured there and back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's because if we were not, so if we weren't touring, we would have flown and we wouldn't have had the bus. So. Yeah. But you know, you see the bus. I mean, there's 11 grown men on there. Yeah, you yeah, know, and, yeah. And uh, it's that's a lot. 
yeah, drinking Miller Lite all day. Drinking Miller Lite all day. But you know, even then, you know, it's just like sometimes that's our space. Like this is like the, the there's, you know, you'd be surprised at how many of like the, of the, the clubs and, and bars that are super famous for having bands don't have accommodations for us. You know, you'd, you'd be very surprised yeah. like, you know, that, okay, you guys are using the bus for your, uh, for your dressing room today. And it's yeah. like, awesome. Well, we've only been on here for the last 18 fucking hours. So this is great. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you're just, you know, but, um, but you know, oh. I don't know. Again, you, there are very few things in life that feel the way that that feels when you're on stage and they're singing every word to a song that you're like, I can't even believe you know this. Like That's got to be awesome. Yeah. So like, I, I, I take this for granted. They're all going to know High School Never Ends, almost. They're all going to know Emily. They're all going to know the bitch song. They're all going to know 1985. They're all going to know Phineas and Ferb, whatever. But then we'll, they'll do a, like a deep cut, like out the window off Drunk Enough to Dance or something. And they're like singing every word of that. And you just, it feels, it's exhilarating. And the only two things that I can, uh, that, that feel like that to me are that and uh, hitting a parlay hard way on a dice table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, and I can speak from the other perspective. I mean, the best shows that I've ever been to are when everybody in the crowd knows every word to every song. Yeah, and there's that's... just no other experience like that. So mm -hmm. I'm sure being on the other side of that, when it's your fucking song, that's got to be, that's got to be the coolest thing ever. It's yeah. unbelievable. And sometimes I'll be sitting there thinking like the bit song, for example, you know, I wrote that song in my underwear in my kitchen in about four minutes. You know, wow. I just like, it's just, those are the ones. They're yeah. all like that. Like yeah. the, the, the big songs are all like just, it, it just bam, just came out. And, uh, and then here you are and there's a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. I mean, if we're at a festival, there's a hundred thousand people singing every word, you know, and you're just like, wow, you know, how, how did I get here? So, you know, it's, it's, it's rewarding enough that you, that you just you know, you just do it. How is, but does tattooing feel like that sometimes? Once in a while. I, and I think this is probably the depression talking yeah. or a burnt out feeling. Yeah. Cause I've had, you know, our couples counselor says I'm, I'm burnt out. My therapist. Oh, it sounds like depression. So I have no idea what it is, right. but this moment of time where like my hobby has become my work and mm -hmm. I absolutely love what I do. Um, but I, like, I, I just feel like in a rut. Like, I yeah. don't feel like creating so much. It could be the medication I'm, like, trying yeah. to figure out. Um, if it is a burnt out feeling, like, wondering, like, how do you keep it fun and mm -hmm. refreshing all the time? And you, you got to perform. You got to yeah. perform on stage. Yeah. I got to tattoo, make it the best tattoo I've ever done mm -hmm. every single time. Yeah. Um, is it a work-life balance and how do you keep it? Yeah. I think it is. I think it's a matter too of giving yourself a break. You know, if you need a break, take a break, you know, and, and, and I, that's hard and it's hard to convince yourself to do that. But also I think you're very smart in doing the thing, other things, teaching people doing, mm -hmm. I think you're doing art classes now, right? You're doing uh, this, you're doing yeah. seminars, whatever yeah. you're, you're connecting with people, whatever. I think you, even though you're sitting with this person all day, you know, all day for a day and you're tattooing them, you're not, there is a connection there. And we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, that's not, you know, that's not like being in, in the world. You know what I mean? Like you're still working. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important for you to, to, to do things that where you can be more social and, and to, and get those other forms of creativity. It's a shame that you're not painting more. But I understand what that rut's like because that's the way Casey's an artist as well. And sometimes she's just like, I can't even think of anything to paint, you know? And like, it just, so, you even know. Even just bringing out the paints yeah. and just sitting down, like, that's hard for yeah. me to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then maybe it's something else, you know? I mean, maybe it's just, uh, you know, you may need a spa day. Yeah. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like how you likened tattooing to performing because I've, I've, thought about this a lot you know there are bands that I've seen multiple times and like sometimes some of their shows are just better than others mm -hmm. and I always think um I'm like man you know you never know what's going on on tour that day like maybe you haven't oh, showered in two days sure. and, and uh, sounds like it's not this way for you but maybe the last thing you want to do is stand up and like perform for a bunch of people so well you 
you're sort of like that walking to the stage. Yeah. You know, like you're, you don't feel good or the air conditioner is broken at home and the wife is like, I don't know what to do. And, and you, there's so many little things that can happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that walk to the stage can be long sometimes. Mm. That's setting up the paints. Mm. You know, it can, that, that can be very difficult. Um, and, you know, I, it's hard because I'm there with my best friends. I don't want to be anywhere else, but I'm tired and I'm, but I think it's been obvious even during this interview, if you give me a microphone, I'm going to use it. And so that's what happens to me. I yeah. just, I get up there and mm. I, there's a microphone and I'm just like, but I'm going to fucking make these people's night, you know? And are there nights where I'm counting backwards the songs to know like when I'm going to be done? Yeah. 100% it happens. Mm. But my job is to make sure I'm the only one that knows that. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's the other thing that's lucky about my job is I sort of can play the character of Jared. You know, like I can, it's very easy to just, that's the reason why nobody knew that I was depressed before I started talking about it. Because even if you would have run into me during the worst of those two years, there is no way you would have known. Mm. My best friends didn't know because yeah. I can turn this shit on and off. Like it, it's because it's, I, I make people happy. That's what it's I a, do. It's a performance. Yeah. It's a performance. That's a huge load to carry. It is. For so long. It is. It is. But you know, and that's another reason why it felt so good to get that out there. And it's, and I do take up for people a lot. Like if somebody's, Oh, I met this guy. He's an, he's an asshole. Is he an asshole? Did he, did he have the flu? You know, you don't, did his dog just die? Yeah. You should have fucking been around me the fucking two months after my dog died. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I was a maniac. Yeah. You know, like y you have to allow people to be humans, you know, at, yeah. at the same time, nobody should be an asshole. Yeah, sure. Um, mm -hmm. Whether you're having a bad day or not, you know, you, you slip up sometimes. Huh? We slip up. Sometimes. We do slip up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All of us. All of us. Everybody. You know, and and but you know what? You should be able to. You should be able to. Everybody should be able to have bad days. And to make mistakes. And yeah. Then, well, that's the thing, right? We if we don't make mistakes, we never learn. That's the whole thing. It's as simple as multiplication, right? You you used to take the speed test. It was all a, a whole sheet of problem, you know, and at the first you could only get through 10 and most of them were wrong. And then a month later you could do the whole thing in a minute and a half and they're all right, you know, and they, because you got there. Well, I feel like that's so hard about um, being famous or being a person that, you know, people know outside of the one interaction that they have with them or person is, yeah. you know, people are going to form an opinion on you based of, mm -hmm. based on how you act. And it could even be, you're not being an asshole. It could be just yeah. the way that they perceive you in that moment, you know? So yeah. I think that is super important to, you know, think, okay, maybe this person's just having a bad day. Cause it's, it's tough when people spend, you know, maybe years following your work and they have this perception of you. And then you just have a split second with them to like, to yeah. either either you know tear down their whole opinion of you or reinforce it, and uh, yeah, it seems only best natural family. that there could be a few few times where you just don't leave the best impression on somebody. And social stuff. media is a motherfucker, you know. Like I, uh, for example, I can never not tip good. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I yeah, must yeah, tip yeah. well. It doesn't matter what kind of service you give me. <laughs> I must tip you well because if I don't, you will fuck me. Yeah. yeah. On the internet. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we were at Top Golf the other day. Oh, no. <laughs> and this guy comes over and he goes, Hey, we just ordered a bucket of beers and uh, we're not going to drink them. We got to leave and we're not going to drink them. So, do you guys want these? And I just kind of go, Ah. And my friend Derek goes, Hey, hey, what kind are they? And the guy goes, They're Michelob Ultras. And he goes, No, we're fine. Thank you. And I go, Thank you so fucking much because. If I would have said that, I'd have been the dick, but he knew I didn't want those because I'm going to drink Miller Lite yeah. because I'm, gonna, I'm having a day where I, I want to have what I want to have. Yeah. But I literally froze in that moment because, nice, Jarrett, I was about to go, yeah, bring those fucking over. And then I would have been drinking this beer that I didn't want, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. And uh, so he rescued me from that. But, uh, but yeah, I, it's funny, though, because I tip so well. 
that one time somebody got online and said that I was a bad tipper and they service industry people fr- came from out of the no way. Wood- oh yeah. <laughs> going bullshit. That guy tipped me a hundred bucks at a bar one night and blah, blah, blah. No, he's always 25, 30% or That's more, so awesome. you know? And so, uh, they took up for me. So, Hell yeah. um, you know, funny side story. Uh, maybe this is one of the people that jumped in on that, but, um, Right around the time you met, and I, I think I was like leaving work one day, but I, I happened to be serving <laughs> at that uh, 54th Street up in Frisco. Yeah. And I never saw you there, but they all said, you know, you were there oh, yeah. a bunch. So it's yeah. just like a, this crazy coincidence that, yeah. you know, we were just around each other and then ended up meeting. That's anyway. right. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that now because I remember that you, that you, because I, I, I was going in there and watching football a lot back then. Um, back when the Steelers were better. <laughs> Boy, it's a rough Sorry, I had, a, I had to get oh, you. <laughs> God. Uh, no, I was. I was going up there, uh, you know, and watching quite a bit. You know, COVID really got me out of the out of going and doing Don't, shit like yeah, that. Yeah. I still am not in the habit of going and doing things. Dude, like I, I, I love, like, one of my favorite things in the world is sitting at home all day on Sunday and watching Red Zone yeah. all day. Like, yeah. that's one. And, and, um, your this anxiety might- must not be very bad right now then because that gives me so much anxiety. <laughs> They're jumping around all the time and I'm going, ah! Please, for the love of God, stay still. So, uh, you know, you know, we talk about hobbies. So, like, one of my hobbies that nobody else is into, um, you know, in my workspace is, like, fantasy football. And so, when oh, I, yeah. so, full disclosure, like, when I picked up my phone 20 minutes ago is to make sure that nobody in my starting lineout was out for the day. Got and it. That's, like, yeah. That's, yeah. that's one of my things. Like, I love that and I have a awesome wife who understands and that in the fall that. on Sundays, I'm, I'm just not going to be available right? all day, yeah. all day. So, yeah. well, that's, I, yeah. I t- my wife is coming home from a girl's trip today and, uh, I, I would normally have the house a little cleaner, but, uh, Everett and I have been, we've been pretty active and I've, I've had to work too. I'm, I'm, uh, the mouse has kept me pretty busy, uh, the last couple of days. So I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's not as – and so I'm just – I basically just sent her a text and said, hey, when I get home from this interview, I'm going to sit in the, on the living room with my dogs and watch football, and I'm going to clean the house tomorrow because uh, she's going to be back today. Yeah. So I'm going to be like, hey, don't stress. Uh, when yeah. you come in, I'm going to do all this. Yeah. It's just not going to be done when you sure, get home. Sure, sure, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm going to go sit. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. awesome. When you're so busy, you literally have to plan in the calendar mm-hmm. time for yourself. Yep, and time to be a couple too. Yes. You know? I mean, uh, we, we, got, we got in a huge rut, um, COVID, and you know, we got out of the habit of, of doing date nights, and it's it just into the slump of just like, hey, what do you want to watch tonight, you know, and ordering food and uh, you know, we have to make ourselves sure. you know, like, Hey, we let's go eat a steak. You know, we've got to do this. You know, we got to go to a movie. We've got to, you know, and, and we always connect so well there, but you know, it's, uh, like I said, the, that, that whole thing, I, I, you know, I, I don't, we don't go to trivia anymore. We don't all the shit that we used to do, you know, COVID, we just, God, I don't wear pants, you know, like, I mean, I, I put pants on for this, but you know, um, <laughs> But yeah, man, it's, uh, but it, yeah, all that shit's important. I like fantasy football too. I'm, I'm so busy this year though, that I'm just letting fantasy pros yeah, just set yeah, my lineup. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, because I'm, I don't know when we did our, our drafts, I'm in two leagues. I, I was in seven at one point, which That's is a lot. It's, it made it where it wasn't fun Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. every game had somebody over here and somebody over here. And I just like, I, I it uh, was yeah. too much. Um, I think that was pre-depression, actually. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's that maybe might that's have been one cost. of the things that triggered it. <laughs> but I'm in two leagues now, and uh, and I when I did the draw, I was just like, man, I don't know one player. Yeah. I have not watched Sports Center. I have not done any research. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do what Fantasy Pros tells me what to do until yeah. the fourth or fifth round, and then I'll start going like a player down to shake things up. You yeah, know? yeah, and you yeah. know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? For sure. I mean, so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I do, I do find it fun, but I, I haven't gambled at all. Like I told my drummer this the other day and he goes, what? Cause I, every season I, I usually make a few grand the first couple of weeks and then I lose it all the rest of the season. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, man, I haven't placed a bet. I haven't done daily fantasy once. Yeah. I, it's probably for the best. Just this, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, they don't give you the free. It's like the, the my dad says, and the, they don't, they don't light those casinos up because people win. Yeah, you know? right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So uh, I 
man, this is this has been awesome. And Thank you, man. we're we're not really in a hurry except we have a painting oh, class. Oh yeah, you guys got a painting minutes. class and uh, my um, my son's going to be back soon from his uh it's going to be interesting to see how this went. I don't think they've been a, my son is right now with my uh my wife's grandmother. So he's with his great grandmother. They're they're going to lunch and she's taking him shopping. They started at the bookstore. And uh, it is going to be very interesting because they've not really spent any time alone. Like, we, they see each other a lot. Yeah. She comes to his games, yeah. and, and we do holidays together and shit. But, uh, like, this is, this is a new tradition she's hoping to start because she d- used to do this well with all the grandkids. You know, taking them to lunch and taking them shopping for their birthday present. So I, I'm actually pretty anxious to hear his review of this because yeah. you know he hasn't really like been alone with her. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and she's you know she's a really funny lady, but uh, but you know all all people have their quirks, right? So uh, I think Absolutely. it'll be cool. But she's yeah, she's awesome. But yeah, he'll be back soon, and then we're gonna go catch the second half of the Steelers loss. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I don't even know what to do. Like I I I I don't wear a Steelers shirt on game day anymore because I'm like, is it me? You know, like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, I, you know, I I like all of my, I I my all of my jerseys are just hung up neatly, and then and I've got like a couple of t-shirts that I like to wear throughout the thing, and I'm just like, I don't know, maybe it's I maybe I'm fucking this up for everybody. I don't know. So. Um, well, th- so I mean, the only other thing that I really wanted to get into is, I mean, we talked about reality show earlier, and yeah. you uh, foreshadowed a little bit, maybe yeah. some of the alcohol involved with that. And I was just going to ask, you know, as an Ink Master yeah. fan, if mm-hmm. you had any questions for her about how the show went or anything like that. I mean, I know you guys have talked about this. I had but. you binge my latest season yeah. yesterday, and I apologize for in advance for doing that. I um, so I so I will tell. The listener viewer might not know this, but I'm very protective of my friends. And uh, Deanna, uh, at sometimes it's it's it doesn't seem as as rampant, or maybe you just don't acknowledge it. But there, like I, some of there'll be comments on your stuff or whatever, and I will fucking lose my mind. So <laughs> I was you. anxious to, and I'm very protective of again my friends, and and you're my friend, and and uh, I don't like it. I don't. I don't like that. I mean, especially when people would comment, uh, oh, I think this stems from people would comment because you look like you do, you shouldn't be able to post pictures of yourself Mm -hmm. looking nice um, because you're a fucking tattoo artist, like, fuck, you know, whatever. And it's so stupid because you're a beautiful lady and you, you, the photos that you put out are, are awesome. And it's awesome that you can have the confidence to do that, you know? And, and and I think it's fucking great, you know? Uh, I actually... Uh, Colton, some of the photo shoots that you've been in, I wonder, like, what is, uh, she's for sure had to talk you into it, because you've, like, dressed up as a Viking, you know, and, like. (laughs) A Viking? I'm kidding. (laughs) Y'all do, like, some role play shit, though, or whatever, but some of it's, there's some sexy shit. Anyway, (laughs) but back to this whole thing. Um, So, this, that season of Ink Master, I, I binged it last night. And I watched all the other tattoo artists walk in the walk into their intro, and I watched how they all reacted to one another. And then I watched you walk in, and it was a completely different thing. <laughs> and it was like they had this mark on you from the beginning. Yeah. They they didn't want you there. Yeah. And I, I, it, you could fucking see it, and they're fucking scared of you, and they all knew it. And even Ryan, like, knew. Like she was just like, oh, yeah, she's a fucking badass. You know, like you're you're gonna fucking slay everybody. And so uh, it was interesting when all the clicks started and you've done so well both times, just you stay out of the drama. You're not, you're not this uh, boiling personality trying to get television time. Right. Yeah. Right. And sometimes I think that that's the reason why they just swallow you like a piranha. It's funny because I, uh, in the very, very beginning, I was so worried because I thought everyone hated me. And I was, everybody has a big personality and I don't. Yeah. And even when the producers and stuff, they're like, you like you got to talk. This isn't friend master. Well, on, on both seasons, right? On both seasons. Yeah. And like, you're not going to get TV time if you don't talk. And I'm like, I literally don't know how to confront people. I have no idea. Right. Um, so I'm just that kind of person. Yeah. I thought in the very beginning, Angel and Holly hated me. Ah. Ended up becoming great friends. I of love mine. that. I love <laughs> but that. But at first, I thought they hated me, and so I was just very quiet. And Angel was the one who actually came up to me, like out of the blue, when I was in the hot tub in the hotel, like in between. Yeah. Days, she was like, 
do you not like us? And I'm like, uh, she's like, do you not like us or are you just quiet? And I'm like, I'm just quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you guys didn't like That's me. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah dude, it, I mean, it, but it, it was like you took control of that first um, challenge that you guys did with the, with making the window thing. And, uh, and they, they were all listening. They knew like from an artistic standpoint that they needed to listen to you. Yeah. And you could tell like, and they 100%, there was nobody arguing with you. Like once you started going, okay, we should do this. And they're like, yep, that's what we should do. And, uh, I think the one thing though, that I, I can't imagine how heartbreaking it was for you that, uh, you see Joel mad and you're like, I would have had a good Charlotte tattoo. I loved you so much. And then he's the one that fucking takes your tattoo and just flushes it down the toilet because they didn't like the other guy. And he somehow fucking, it, what it made it look like, well, Ryan was saying that you didn't pack the shit in or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he's the one that just said, no, that's a better tattoo because the other guy was sold that, the, that yours was better. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry that you had a pop punk heartbreak. <laughs> yeah, it was a pop punk. I'm heartbreak. so sorry I'm that write happened. A song about it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pop punk heartbreak, man. Uh, but. It, it, you would notice too. Like, I, I, well, I don't know if you notice, but the uh, so we did the window thing. Yeah, and in the critiques afterwards, you didn't see I was there at all, and yeah. that's because I was in the ER. Right. After that happened, I hurt my back mm -hmm. so bad because I originally went on the show with like the worst sciatica of my mm -hmm. life, which I'd never had before. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's no fun. Um, or I couldn't, I wasn't sleeping, like I could hardly eat, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to do Ink Master anyway because yeah. they told me two weeks in advance. They're like, you want to be on Ink Master? Right. I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. and we'll just do it. Um, but yeah, it, I, I left because that window thing, I was like six hours of like, putting post-it notes on yeah. however big that was. Um, after that, I was telling the producer, I was like, I don't know how long I can do this anymore because I was in so much pain yeah. and stuff. Um, next thing I know, like, I'm in the bottom. Who knows if it was because sure. of me being like, I can't do this yeah, or if out. it was really a bad tattoo. Um, it just, it's I would have that on that me. worked out. I would have that because oh, it's fucking awesome. on me yeah. right now. Yeah. I would have it on me. And, and the, I thought... I'm like, she, I, I thought the colors were fucking perfect. Like, I was Thank just like, that, that to me is like what she, because I know you and I, and I watch your Instagram and, and like, I know, I see every tattoo you post. I'm like, that's fucking amazing. Like, that's what she does. Like, that, you don't understand when that thing is healed, it's still going to look like that. Yeah. You I want to get a healed photo so badly because I, I fucking love that tattoo. I think it looks like a Picasso. It looks like it a Picasso. Right? And I'm not like, I don't go out there and be like, oh, my work's sick, like all the time, for right. sure. I'm like, oh, you know, I could do better every single time I do a tattoo. But right. this one, I was like, I was stoked about it. Yeah. So I was I was bummed about the critiques I got. And the few people from my cast, too, who were like, I don't know if it showed on TV, but they were dogging on me. Mm -mm. To Like one of them actually came and apologized afterwards off screen because it really was a lot. Yeah. Um, you also I still hate them. <laughs> it fucking broke my heart, man. When you teared up, like you're, t and you're just trying to be so strong. And then it's interesting to know that you were going through some other shit too, because I didn't know on the first time that you were on the show that you had had so much anxiety until we became friends and stuff. And so just to know that you were, go but man, it fucking, I wanted to jump through the TV too, yeah. Colton, like, and just like I would, have, I will fucking whip your ass. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> this sucks. Well, and, and that and being on the other side of that whole experience was such a trip for me because, first of all, you know, my wife's gone. We never spent that much time apart sure. from each other. And then, you know, she's filming all day. And it's also, uh, you know, uh, Vancouver time because they were in Vancouver. So it was like, you know, starting at 10 o'clock, she didn't have her phone for the rest of the day. And mm -hmm. when she finally got it back at like midnight there time, it was like 2 a.m. for me. So I'm sure. staying up all day. I'm anxious all day. And that was like when, you know, she was going through all that stuff. So I'd heard about how much pain she was in and stuff. So I'm just like wondering how she's doing yeah. all that. And, and the elimination was, was a super trippy because, you know, they do the critique on the day after they do the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she calls me at the end of the day of her tattoo and she's, she's like, I love my tattoo. Like, I think I won best of day, Yeah, which she never done before, you know, on the last one. And I'm right. like, that's so fucking cool. She's like, yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is like, you know, it was, I technically did it backwards because the lady's facing the, and I'm like, dude, it's a fucking Picasso. Like it's right. But anyway, so like that whole thing happened 
And then the next call I got from her the next day was, you know, I got eliminated yeah. from the show. And I, so I was like, what the fuck happened? But um, so, you know, and she told me, she tells me the whole story. I didn't experience it in real time. But, you know, the first time that they went in for critique, everybody loved it. You know, nobody said anything bad about it. Right. And then they broke, they broke. And that's when she had the conversation with Katie and Holly when they're all crying. And Deanna talked a lot more in that than they showed it on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't there obviously, but from what she told me. And so, yeah. so that's when she kind of got the feeling is like, ah, I, I think I might, you know, I think one of us is going to be going home. Cause that's when I spoke up and I, and I told them, I don't know how long I can do this. Cause I had just gotten out of the ER that early morning yeah. at like four in the morning yeah. and stuff. It and so seemed like pain. a weird shift. It, it seemed like I, I again, it, it seemed like they were leaning towards somebody else being the worst and then it was just all of a sudden, like, again, I, I watched it twice because I wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy. But it's almost like you're right. I mean, I could see. And again, we're not we're not we're speculating that it could have happened that they came over and they're like, hey, we're going to have to write yeah. her out. She's yeah. she's got some medical shit and or whatever. And we don't know. Like, we don't want her to quit. So well, I, I will say, too, though, during when I'm crying and stuff, I I vocally said, I think. I resign. I said that, and they cut that out too. Cause well, they it was between me and Katie, and they were like trying to play like who's gonna go home, and yeah. you know already weird because the when we were there before, like during the critiques, I got a good critique for the most part. Exactly, it was just a saturate, and then all of a sudden I'm in the bottom after I said I don't know. I'm so concerned. weird. But it looked like it was between me and Katie, and I'm like I do not want Katie to go home. So. Right after all the guys were like, you know, like that tattoo is disrespectful. This offends me. It was offensive. I was like, what? I was like, I resign. Like, I think Katie should go on. I think like she should have a chance at Ink Master. Like, um, I think her stuff can make it far. I, I yeah. just, but they, they, it, they acted like they didn't hear me and they yeah. kept going. And so I'm like, did they hear me? And I, I rose my hand again. I was like, I, I just want to make sure you guys know, like I resign. And then they acted like they didn't hear me. And then they continued with their Weird. critique and then yeah. they cut it out. And I got the permission from the producer to talk about this too, by the way. I was like, can I talk about my experience? She's like, yeah, yeah. whatever. And so we didn't, we didn't know like which way they were going to spin it. Like when the episode came out, cause we like, we knew what happened, but, um, and then, and then what they also didn't show is like right before we, you know, when the three of them are having the conversation, they, they talked about like, okay, if we're in the bottom, like we're going to stick up for each other, you know, like yeah. we're, we're like, we're a team. And then, that's when they all got put on the bottom and it was like, yeah, I'm, I, I, you know, I yeah. resign, you know, cause she's standing up for people. But yeah, I, I, I could see you were surprised. Like after the, when you came back in and when they put you, you could see that you were visibly shocked I was that you yeah. were in the bottom because there hadn't been any of this negativity and stuff. It's yeah. so weird. And man. I thought I, I love my tattoo. Oh my God. I saw the others and I'm like, I That's would get so that on me now. Yeah. Like uh, that thing was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, With her and, little boob out and yeah. her strawberry. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, I, I kind of had the feeling before that, that, that maybe like she wasn't their first choice to be on the show. Right. Cause, cause they called her like, it wasn't two weeks. It was like nine days yeah. before filming was going to start. And they were like, Hey, do you want to be on Ink Master? And I was like, dude, you should go for it. Yeah. And you know, everybody else knew for, you know, more time than that. And right. so I was just thinking, you know, she's not like a big personality or anything like that. Like she's a great artist, but she's not going to be as yeah. good for, you know, I'm in their eyes, TV. not going to be as good for she's TV because she's not going to fight. And then, <laughs> right. so, and then it was like, it was like two days before, like she had this awful sciatica flare up where she wasn't sleeping at all. And it was like a day or two. And there was like two days that she could have left and ended up having to push her flight back the second day and she was texting the producers and and we were talking about she's like dude i don't i don't think i can go on the show like i'm, I'm yeah. in so much pain and i i kind of told her um and this this was super hard for me to do because i never want to push you to do anything you're not comfortable with but i was like hey look i really think you should go and if you can't do it you can just come home you know it's yeah. it might the flight over there might suck whatever but yeah. you know you don't want to like i i think it's worth it for you to try to do this mm -hmm. and um didn't, didn't get too much better. And so that was a, a big part of our conversations when she was there is like how much pain she was in. She was not sleeping at night. She was pacing around the hotel for hours. Cause that was the only thing that made her back feel better, which yeah, is walking. That sucks. Um, and so, you know, 
I had a pretty good idea of how much pain she was in just, you know, talking to her through that. Sure. So, um, it's really impressive that you made it, you yeah. know, that you even went at all and that you stayed there for that long. Cause, very, very cause yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 that's the most pain that she's ever expressed that she's been in, yeah. you know? And, um, as somebody who, you know, I've had little sciatica, just like, you know, just moments where I'm like, mm-hmm. that yeah. fucking sucks. Yeah. So, uh, so experiencing that for like all day, every day, I Lasted cannot imagine month. even functioning <laughs> with that. And, yeah. and, and by the way, when you came home, it cleared up pretty quickly So <laughs> yeah. because it it's, you know, stress affects it. Does and that so- happen to you? Like when I, when I'm about to do something big or travel, something health wise happens, my body's just stressed and does something weird. Does it doesn't. It does happen to a few guys in my camp though. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't happen to me. Um, I'm new to back pain, but, uh, our, our guitar player has the sciatica thing and man, it's, uh, it's brutal, dude. I mean, and especially, you know, 14 hour flights and stuff, you know, like I, it's, I, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. It's so I have to like take this, you know, this back medicine, if I'm going to sit for a long period of time on a plane or whatever, because that's the, you know, it just the, my lower back or whatever, but I'm, I just started doing. Uh, this yoga stuff that's supposed to help. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll be out of the woods on that whole thing. But yeah, cause I'd rather not be taking aspirin to be able to get through a show. Yeah. But I never know when the, when the guitar is going to kick in, you know, as far as it hurt me. And, and I did have one show where I was just like, I, I walked off stage and like, please take this away from me. You know, like I'm like fucking in tears and shit. Cause oh my God. back hurts. So oh, God so, damn. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, no, I, I don't get that, but I totally, you know, yeah, your body, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a wonderful, curious thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I appreciate you watching the, the show. Yes, like, of course. I, I guess I was curious on your take of it as like oh, an yeah. outside view. Looking yeah. In, like, and knowing you and stuff, but I, you yeah. know, it's funny because I think when they, you got that first tattoo and it was your shit, that eyeball thing. And I'm like, they're fucked. Like she's, I mean, like, and they <laughs> yeah. all knew it too. They, yeah. they were even talking about it. Like Deanna's going to fucking kill this because it's your shit. Well, so, so the, the other funny thing too was after she did that tattoo, you know, the night that she called me to tell me about how the day went, she was like, oh, I think I fucked up really bad. Like, I don't think it was saturated. Like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to be in the bottom, you know? Yeah. And then she ended up being the best one yeah. of the day. Yeah. And then the second tattoo she did, it was the absolute opposite experience. So yeah. Yeah, that was a unique perspective, but um, yeah. Well, I should have watched that when it came out, but I knew that I I I already knew from just following you uh, that it didn't, didn't go, go your well. way. So I was just like, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, um, Thanks for wanting to stand up for me, though. Of course, I yeah. I will, I will throw an that. elbow for you. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I um, but I you know again, I think I sort of watched it being a little bit defensive, you know, because again, yeah. I I was. To even your entrance or whatever, I'm just like, okay, these fuckers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, it's interesting that they have the other guy from Miami Inc. You know, it's just like, hey, we can't get Chris. Let's get the other guy. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's so, it's interesting. I, who are you talking about? The bald guy. Oh, the judge. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he, he and Chris were on the Miami Ink show together, right? Mm. Oh, I, I don't actually don't think I've watched it. Yeah, so they're like the, the OG tattoo show. Oh. And they were on together. But since Chris isn't on, they, got, they went and got that guy. I just found yeah. that interesting. Yeah, and I, I don't think he's on it this he's season anymore. It this it's, season. it's DJ instead. Yeah, DJ's, DJ's, DJ's a judge. On there, so. right. Yeah, DJ's yeah. a great so, tattoo artist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for he's, sure. He's good. He, he, dude, he's like the quintessential like ink master. Like he's just really good at everything. He's, you know, he's good. That yeah. guy's that guy's something special, man. Yeah. He's uh, he's good. But so are you. Thank you. You're oh an, yeah. You're an ink oh, master yeah. in our hearts. Oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> well, man. Um, yeah. Gosh, this has been great, y'all. Dude, this, yeah. this is you. this is uh, you know I've loved that every show that we've done, but this has got to be probably my favorite one that we've done. I, yeah. I just love you know we talked about dicks and mental health and ink master and, and boobs and, and yeah. bands and yeah, country it's, dude, and it's, it's, pop it's punk been, and it's been um, fucking awesome it's so. been awesome this has been a great conversation for me and thank you you know anytime i get to share these things you know it's 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 a bit like therapy for me and, yeah uh, so thank you and again thank you for your perspective and of course deanna thank you for being a champion of mental health and using your platform for that and uh you thank know. you for the exact same yeah. and and 
everybody like please go check out jared's uh album just woke up his new single that's out um bowling for soup like if you haven't heard of bowling for soup you need to (laughs) fucking do that right now well Um, if you haven't heard of us you have you just don't know it but you know (laughs) you know three of our songs for sure yeah (laughs) we know you guys haven't been living under a rock um and also foundation 45 so if like anybody needs help or needs uh any resources check out that foundation Foundation. 45 and uh punk rock saves lives um and uh, yeah, you can follow me everywhere, JarrettRayReddick.com or BowlingForSoup.com. And I'm on all the social medias, Jarrett2113 or uh, Jarrett Reddick on TikTok. And um, yeah, you know, I uh, appreciate this. This has been yeah. great. Yeah, Thank it's been so much. so much fun. Thanks again, Thank man. You. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>